वेलकम टू सी ए फाइनल डायरेक्ट टैक्स लेक्चर पेपर नंबर सेवन यू नो इट इज पेपर सेवन नो ओके इवन इफ यू डोंट नो दिस एवरीथिंग विल बी कवर्ड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर इंट्रोडक्शन जस्ट टेल योर सेल्फ दैट आई डोंट नो एनीथिंग एंड आई एम गोइंग टू बी इंस्ट्रक्टिंग यू अबाउट ईच एंड एवरीथिंग टूडेज लेक्चर इज मेजरली गोइंग टू बी इन द नेचर ऑफ एन इंट्रोडक्शन देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच आई हैव टू टेल यू which i may not be able to tell you once we start with our chapters once we are into our portion in full flow thereafter i will not get time to tell you about these things so today will be only like an introduction can you see the screen can you see the things that i have written clear handwriting is visible no okay we will have the introduction point by point in exact same order in which i have written first introduction about the faculty that is introduction about myself acha by the way you all know my name i have written under my frame okay my name is professor siddharth surana i am a qualified chart do i look like one i am a qualified chartered accountant no if you don't trust me you can go and check with icai database that is my membership numbers i look very young i look very handsome i also know that but uh, it's been 10 years as a chartered accountant 11 years as a professor of cf so i started teaching one year before i became a ca while i was appearing for my ca final exams i was also teaching ca final students multitasking expert so 11 years in the ca coaching field and uh, yes uh, even if i look very young and handsome that is the time that i have spent in this okay in these few years there are a few things my point number 1 is going on uh, by the way so i'm speaking about that there are a few things that i have done in ca coaching i was the one to start it then in due course other people followed it for example i was the first person in the country to start recorded video lectures way back in 2013 nobody had any idea what direct to home recorded lectures are all about so a student has to just go to the website book the lectures and the lectures will be sent to his or her house we started with dvds then with time we moved to pen drive then of course these days it is about google drive provide the data and it can be downloaded in encrypted form we were the first people to start it i was the first person in the country to take an online live lecture after corona virus everybody knows what is zoom what is online live you are able to attend lectures only because of all these facilities but before that there was only youtube live and before that there was only facebook live even before youtube introduced this live option i took a facebook live lecture way back in 2017 when no one was aware of what an online live lecture is all about i was the first one who did this third thing i actually traveled to a lot of places uh, other than mumbai also for taking lectures i am from mumbai only born and brought up in south mumbai it makes a lot of difference ha huh? obnoxious towny by birth born and brought up in south uh, mumbai but i travel to a lot of places i go to ahmedabad i go to uh, kerala i go to andhra after i started traveling to south i realized that the students over there have got a language problem and uh, if if i talk in hindi they are never going to understand the lectures at all because they are not taught hindi they don't know hindi and thus i was the first person again in the country to start this option of 100% english lectures uh, so hindi english mix version and 100% english version of the lectures both are that way available to be honest if you talk about my knowledge of languages mujhe hindi aati hai i am born and brought up in maharashtra my mother's womb i came out i came out in the land of maharashtra mala marathi yete ani changli yete all my friends are gujus gujarati avde che i am a marwadi mother tongue is marwadi marwadi avde i travel to kerala ki korcho korcho malayalam mana salva but point is that your exams are in english you have to learn in english you have to write in english your interviews will be in english post qualification you have to whatever you choose 
as your whether you go in practice or you go in job or wherever you will need english most importantly you have to write your exams in english is there any student out here who has opted for hindi medium exams by the way there is no third option given by icai either english medium or hindi medium any third option is not available anyways then topic is over i do understand and agree that english is not a measurement of intelligence but you have to learn in english so this option was provided by me apart from that if if i talk about some more things you all know that there are mcqs in ca final theory papers now so 25 marks will be our target but mcqs i can talk about the tar target later 30% of your paper is mcqs out of 100 marks 30 marks are mcqs multiple choice questions i wrote a book on mcqs when they were introduced for the first time in may 19 exams i covered 1500 mcqs in my book first time that was still more than anybody else in my subject i started with that then second time i did about 1600 mcqs till last year it was about 1600 mcqs and while the book was the the level of questions best ever all questions of icai till date have been covered but uh, uh, the problem with students was that sir we have the question and below the questions we have the table so question 1 answer a question 2 answer b question 3 answer c but how to solve that sum sir if we go wrong in one step we will never be able to identify the correct answer and generally that wrong step is my other option which i have given you in the mcq so if you make one mistake you'll get the other option as the correct answer and you'll say sir my answer is not matching so i recorded solutions of these mcq lectures and i have uploaded them on my youtube channel all 1600 questions i uploaded and recorded of course this year's textbook i think some of you all have already received the book so you all are aware that this year we have covered over 1800 questions in our mcq book and every question of ic ai database till date right from the first day when they introduced mcqs every single question last year they released a case study digest very very difficult very difficult level unless and until you know everything in direct tax in minute detail you will never be able to solve those questions i have incorporated all the questions there is not a single question which you will find in any icai rtp or mock test paper or case study digest or anything exam questions they don't release publicly i don't know whether you are aware of this so if you want to see past exam question paper they will show you only 70 marks paper the subjective part the objective part is not shown to students just like it used to happen at the time of cpt those question papers were never released it is believed that institute has got a limited pool of questions and they continuously ask the questions from that same set so they cannot release those questions publicly but whatever they have released like rtps mtps sample questions case study digest everything is covered not a single ic ai question so you don't have to search at different places all questions at one place and i think you all have received the books no already some of you all at least so if you will have a look at it you will get an idea of what i am talking about so i have recorded these lectures see so till now the lectures which are available on youtube are applicable till the november 21 attempt which was the last year's textbook once uh, my other work will get over i'll definitely record at least the difficult ones at least the case study part and it is going to be available you can like share subscribe hit the bell button never miss an update till take a later not now right now pay attention so these are the things that i have done in ca coaching apart from that if i talk about the uh, results every attempt attempt after attempt we have got exemptions students have scored in ca final direct tax more than anybody else more than all india rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 coincidentally i have had a student who scored air 2 air 3 air 5 i have had quite a few students in top 10 but the truth is that if a student is getting rank it means that the student is intelligent and has done good in all the subjects let's be honest about it in direct tax students score more than all india rank 1 2 rank 1 2 3 in every attempt provided you follow my instructions and a lot of instructions i am going to give you as a part of today's introduction if you follow everything that i say i challenge guarantee promise that you are going to get your exemption last time a student scored 81 marks in i think her photo must be also there in the book that is given to you 
इज इट एटी वन मार्क्स वन मोर स्टूडेंट एटी मार्क्स एटी वन मार्क्स इन डायरेक्ट टैक्स पीपल डोंट स्कोर इन टू अटेम्प्ट टोटल and of course big number in 70s 60s by the way that is the result of one attempt okay so don't worry what is to be covered what can be skipped what is to be covered in complete detail what is to be covered in the form of an overview 11 years are with me and they are going to support you don't worry just simply follow my instructions be be an idiot when you are following my instruction do not use your brain my brain is enough to secure an exemption for you follow my instructions and it is my guarantee promise assurance that you will score your exemption in direct tax enough about myself by the way as and when we proceed in our lectures i will continuously say good things about myself i strongly believe that you should always say good things about yourself you should believe that you are good then only you will be able to act good so for the time being enough about myself i will move on to point number 2 in point number 2 i am going to introduce to you the subject by the way all this can happen only in the first lecture and in the second lecture you don't expect me to tell you all this because my job is not to introduce the subject my job is to teach you the subject okay so all this can happen in the first class thereafter these things are obviously not going to be discussed we have direct tax as your paper number 7 actually the name of the paper is direct tax and international taxation direct tax laws and international taxation your paper is divided into 70 marks of direct tax and 30 marks of international tax don't be confused i am not talking about the elective paper international tax i do not want any confusion here hello in paper 6 you know you have elective papers no you can choose any one out of six options out of which global financial reporting standard case study nobody chooses these subjects people are like sir we are not understanding indian accounting standard indes we are struggling with that you expect us to choose gfrs obviously nobody is going to choose that nobody is going to choose case study of course uh, going by trend i have seen students going for international tax economic law capital market and risk management these are the only four papers i will be giving you a little introduction about the elective paper of international tax also but this is different huh? in paper 6 you have an option you can choose or you can avoid this is mandatory this 30 marks international tax everybody has to study i hope you are clear that international tax is that way uh, 130 marks in your overall ca final system if you choose the elective paper this is over and above that 100 marks some topics of international tax are covered with your dt also this is what we are going to cover this total is going to be 43 chapters total ha huh? paper 7 this 100 marks will be 43 chapters yes you have heard it right now go check your fr textbook go check your scm p or costing as you may call it go check your sfm textbook go check bloody hell any textbook of ca final and tell me if you have 43 chapters in any book we all know the answer is no direct tax is the biggest subject in terms of size biggest subject it is bigger than fr bigger than sfm bigger than costing audit law elective paper together total cannot match the size of dt and thus if you want to score marks similar to what those other students have scored you need to follow instruction problem is that today i am going to introduce things okay in the introduction part there is a very little which you have to learn for exam this is the most important part when i reach here obviously because this is going to be tested in your exam you'll get a question calculate tax liability so this will be required of course are you listening to me today if i teach you tax rates and maybe after five chapters in chapter 6 supposingly there is a question calculate tax liability and you don't remember what i did today khatam tata finish bye bye 
that's the biggest problem of direct the retention problem students are with short term memory loss you teach us yesterday today we have forgotten things they don't remember to the next lecture also 5 minutes ago what i said they don't remember that is going to cost you badly how you can come out of it i'll give you that in this part manner of learning my only request is just follow the instructions that i give you and your exemption is guaranteed just focus on what i'm saying 43 chapters are there in the book our textbook will be divided in three parts we have got volume 1 volume 2 volume 3 three parts in our textbook of course for those of you all who have already received the textbook can observe in volume 1 we have 16 chapters which are unrelated topics sir what do you mean by unrelated unrelated means supposingly we do chapter number 2 double taxation avoidance agreement please pay attention chapter 2 dt double a finished then we start chapter number 3 cash loans and you don't know what was taught in dt double or you were probably absent in that class you won't have any difficulty in understanding cash loans there is not much connection between these chapters all chapters are independent that's volume 1 then we go to volume 2 where we have 16 related topics they are all connected with each other so we have a chapter called income tax authorities and their powers that will teach us about what is the department who is senior who is junior who is big joint commissioner or deputy commissioner all that will be covered here immediately after this chapter there is a chapter called search and seizure so in it authorities chapter we will be told that these officers can call you in their office whenever they want that is called saman hello they can call you whenever they want if you don't come i will come that is called search and seizure illiterate people call it raid 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 the word raid looks good only as long as ajay devgan is making a bollywood movie when you are studying for a professional course the correct terminology is search and seizure then these officers are going to compute your total income compute your tax liability and pass something called an assessment order for which we have a chapter assessment procedure that's chapter number 19 That is seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. They are all back-to-back -back chapters. If you are unhappy with the assessment, you can go for something called an appeal. File a complaint against the assessment. That's chapter number twenty. If the department feels that the assessment was not done properly, proper investigations were not done, they can go for something called revision. That is chapter number twenty-one. They are all connected with each other. When we do volume one, they can actually jump the order. Again, supposingly, I have got only twenty to twenty minutes remaining in a class. I can pick up a small chapter like political party or electoral trust. It gets over in fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. Small topic. I can jump the order. Here, I cannot jump the order. You cannot learn appeals unless you know assessment. You have common sense, even if you have not studied the chapters. We have to go in order. So, what will happen is when we do these topics first, no. we get used to each other's way of working comfort level will come once these chapters are over so that we can study the connected chapters because here if you miss 5 10 minutes also in any lecture then understanding things will be very very difficult i am telling you very difficult okay so these are 32 chapters and then in the textbook there are eight topics of ca inter or ca ipcc i think all of you all are inter students only no i don't think anybody will be ipcc here eight topics of ca inter where we have five heads of income salary house property business profession capital gain other sources of course i i trust you with this much that at least i know internally you don't know anything but at least you know the names you don't know anything other than the names we all know we all clear intermediate <laughs> with <laughs> indirect tax only nobody studies nobody studies dt in intermediate we all know that okay it's it's common applicable to all so we have five heads there is a chapter called clubbing of income 
there is a chapter called set off and carry forward of losses and there is a chapter called deductions under chapter 6a five heads clubbing set of deductions total eight chapters in volume 3 out of which if if i leave aside salary salary has not been asked since 2011 once also so if we leave salary aside i am going to cover definitely all i am promising you today only that all other topics i am 100% going to cover a small topic like clubbing or set off also will be covered house property other sources will also be covered of course business profession and capital gain we have to cover only we don't have any option but i am going to cover everything including house property ifos clubbing set of deductions i have observed a very very stupid are okay baba ipcc students okay no problem but in ipcc also heads of income were same only same only five heads clubbing set of deduction pay attention to what i am saying please please pay attention it is okay whether you were from inter or ipcc anyways you have not studied direct tax you are here in ca final only on the support of gst and that is common whether you are CA Inter or CA IPCC. Okay. Please pay attention on what I am saying. I have observed a very bad tendency, very stupid tendency of students. Once these 32 chapters are over, they believe, or you are, I am a champ. I scored an exemption in taxation in intermediate. I have done tax work in office. So, I am going to manage all this. I am not going to attend these topics. Finished. What if I tell you they comprise of at least 30 marks in your total? Please take that seriously. You are fortunate enough that someone is teaching you this. When we were students, it was assumed by the teachers that the students already know this from CA Inter. We used to be taught only. Imagine, imagine for covering these topics, I am going to consume at least 10, 10 to 15, minimum 10, maximum 15 extra lectures half month i can save that time utilize it elsewhere if i start thinking commercially i can always use my time elsewhere but we are here to achieve something i have already achieved now it is for you and under all circumstances i want you to get your membership number with the best marks in direct tax and nobody can stop me from doing that, not even you. Okay. I have this target to see you successful and I will do that. I am not even going to listen to you. So, if you want to be serious, I expect a promise from you today. If you want, you can. We will not stop attending after 32 chapters. We will continue attending class even when we are doing volume 3 promise if you can right now are you can do like this also like this also like this also anything is fine video on has a purpose no listen a ca degree ka kasam i am telling you in advance for those of you who have promised kindly take it seriously please okay except salary i am going to cover everything so, these are only 40 chapters. Now, I told you there are 43. Apart from these 40 which are covered in the textbook that I have allotted, there are going to be 3 chapters which I will directly be doing from ICAI study material. Directly from there. So, our textbook is covering these 40. 3 chapters from ICAI study material. You will, you, you know, you will need that uh, study material uh, with you. Uh, hard copy preferably. Soft copy is also fine. But preferably hard copy because soft copy you will be watching in the same device in which you are watching the lecture. So, you cannot flip continuously. So, preferably you should be having the hard copy. But I am not giving you these chapters right now because I will be doing them after finishing 40 chapters. That won't happen now. It will happen in November. So, before that I will give you the names of the chapters. You have to arrange for PDF of 3 chapters. Total of 43 chapters and 40 are covered in the textbook and 3 from ICAI study material. This is how your subject is placed. Unrelated topics, related topics, IPCC topics and 3. These are actually international tax topics. International tax. And then we also have elective paper which we will be doing if there are some students who might want to continue for the elective paper of international tax which we will be doing from ICAI study material only. 
and there is a lot common in these three chapters and the syllabus of paper 6 international tax that that is the reason why we are doing it directly from ICAI study material okay so basically 40 chapters in the textbook and three chapters from ICAI study material that is how your portion is placed if I talk about we are still in point number two of introduction hello what was point number two good morning introduction of the subject please pay attention if at all you are interested paper pattern question number one will be mcq of 30 marks that you are already aware this hello this does not mean that there will be 30 questions of one mark huh? there is one mark mcq two mark mcq in general it is observed that there will be 10 questions of one mark and there will be 10 questions of two marks so questions will be only 20 but marks allotted will be 30 sometimes they ask difficult questions full fledged sums to be solved to get answer to one mcq and thus they allot two marks to such questions that is going to be your first question and then apart from that from question 2 to question 7 that is six questions are you say yes or no six questions you have to attempt any five which will be 14 marks each that's 70 and that's the total of 100 when we say five questions of 14 marks there will not be single question of 14 marks so you can have question 3a and 3b 10 and 4 question 4a and 4b 7 plus 7 12 plus 2 8 plus 6 breakup can be anything the total of every main question will be 14 marks you can leave any one main question in option but i believe you all have this much common sense that you cannot say acha i am doing 3a and 5b and that is how i will attempt 14 marks if you do question 3 you have to do question 3a 3b 3c everything that is how it is counted that you have attempted one question i think i don't need to explain this to you hello ha so internal breakup can be anything but total will be 14 marks and you have to attempt any 5 and that will make your 70 marks if you want to score good marks if you want to have your photograph in this book whenever it will get printed next if you want to have your name here if you want to get that exemption then you have to be smart hard work is important there is no substitute to hard work there is no substitute to discipline but along with working hard you also have to work smart there is a concept called Pareto analysis and costing you heard about it costing is a beautiful subject I'll tell you what. I have taught CA final costing also at the beginning of my career but of course majorly it was OR which was a very scoring part these days it is mostly theory concepts like just in time concepts like uh, you all have heard of the term called Kaizen, Pareto analysis, I, people study them in theory, I apply these principles in my professional life. The concept of Pareto analysis, the concept of Kaizen means continuously improving yourself, continuously improving. So, in the last batch and in the current batch, there will be some improvement in the current batch and the next there will always be some scope of improvement even if you are Sachin Tendulkar no there will always be some kind of shot that you have to learn how to play okay and and only those people succeed who believe that I will continuously learn and at the end of the day it is taxation you know it changes every year no I cannot be rigid and arrogant here that I know everything even if I know everything it is going to change and we have 
if if you know her name at different places in the country she is known by different names in maharashtra we call her tai in kerala she is known by the name of chechi in rest of india you can call her aunty she changes income tax laws almost every month whenever she is free like oh a long time no change chalo let's bring amendments she brings you know whom i am talking about now as a faculty also i have to learn the amendments if an amendment is introduced i have to teach and i have to learn first learning is a continuous process that is kaizen and if i talk about pareto analysis pareto analysis exactly what you are selling different products but out of 10 products there are two products which are giving you maximum revenue 20% of your products which give you 80% revenue is that something that you have studied in course acha some of you have not studied only till now ha huh, sir we have studied we don't remember you only said no short term memory loss chal no problem let's set our target here minimum target ha huh? all this is minimum maximum upper side it can go to anything you all know that mcqs are definitely going to come mandatorily 30 marks a part of your paper pattern in your mcqs you have to minimum score minimum huh? my target is not 25 target is 30 but to give you small provision for silly mistakes some calculation mistake some step that you forget i am giving you scope of 5 marks minimum 25 and the kind of questions that we have covered in our book that i have given you and of course the difficult ones will 100% be recorded and available on youtube it is very very easy why do you think why do you think so many students scored these exemptions in the recent exams because they watched all those mcq lectures and they were very confident about it okay so minimum 25 next we will be doing a chapter called profits and gains of business or profession pgbp i told you know in volume 3 we are covering that that comes for 14 marks question number 2 of your paper is pgbp fix 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 means fix 14 marks no change no surprises here and when you are sure that it is going to come for 14 marks you can at least keep a target of 12 marks minimum i'll tell you what challenge guarantee and promise if you follow the instructions that i give you while teaching pgbp you can get 14 out of 14 also you can get upper side 30 upper side 14 44 marks if passing is your only target in life if passing is your only target in life then 44 marks you can get only in these two areas no need to study anything but of course to answer mcqs you will have to study the chapters these are your minimum targets still we are at 37 next international tax i am not talking about the elective paper i have not even discussed anything about the elective paper i am talking about this 30 marks international tax mandatory for all irrespective of your elective hello bolo yes or no this international tax will be of please pay attention please pay attention you need to be good in maths to understand this this international tax will be only of 20 marks kya yeah. what sir international tax comes for and you are saying 20 are what do i do i act like hindustani bhav ruko jara sabar karo please wait please wait out of 30 marks of your international tax do you understand if your total paper is divided into 70 30 objective and subjective that means this international tax will also be divided no 30% will be mcqs and 70% will be subjective so in your mcqs of 30 marks 
where our target is minimum 25. International tax already is covered for 10 marks. If you do a ratio of 70 30 on this 30, do you understand 30 percent is 9 and 70 percent is 21? Matlab MCQs will have 9 marks on international tax and the remaining international tax will go in subjective part. Now the MCQ part is already covered here. International tax will also come here, no? I am talking about the remaining international tax after finishing our MCQ part. The balance part will be only of 20 marks. Now you understood how 30 became 20? Hello. After removal of MCQs. So ladies and gentlemen, in that 20 marks, let us be honest and let us be a little practical. Some difficult areas you are going to face here. Still, minimum 15 you can keep your target. Not like I will be honest that here I said you can get 30 out of 30 or 14 out of 14. Minimum target is 25 and 12. Here you cannot get 20 out of 20. First of all, you are clear how international tax became 20 instead of 30 after removing the MCQ part. In that 20, let's be practical. 20 out of 20 is never possible. Highest possible is 18. Our minimum target is 15. We are only talking about only talking about our minimum targets. If you observe now carefully, even if you achieve your minimum minimum target, you are done with your passing marks of DT and your aggregate also. I hope you know even if you get 14 all papers, you don't pass. You need to get 50% actually. 50 is covered with minimum minimum. If you go to the maximum part, your exemption is also covered. Be smart. Don't just work hard, be smart also. Please make sure that you focus on these areas. These are your target areas to get your marks. Apart from this, I would also like to tell you about the other important topics because sir, my target is not just passing. If I keep that as my target, this much will take care of it. If I keep only aggregate as the target, again this will take care. But my target is an exemption, not just an exemption with 60 marks, but a mega exemption. I want to score in my 80s or in my 90s. It is my challenge. A challenge, promise. If you score anything above 95 in direct text, in the next textbook, your photo will be on the cover page and bigger than my photo. Bigger than my photo, promise. On the cover page. If there is no space, I will remove my photo and only keep your photo. If you score 95 plus, it's something like but not interested. Okay, <laughs> no problem, no problem. But you'll want to at least clear with good marks, at least an exemption. There are some other important topics that you have to focus on. Uh, we have topics like minimum alternate tax, alternate minimum tax. They are in volume one. We have a chapter called TDS, TCS in volume two. Of course, we have a chapter called assessment procedure, a chapter like capital gains. Uh, charitable trust which is in volume 1 partnership firm which is again in volume 1 these are some other important topics which are generally seen more often because at the end of the day 43 chapters but paper size is only 100 marks so they cannot ask everything these topics are seen very frequently in CA final so you should work smart and Strike the hammer where it makes the most effective impact. Make sure that you study these topics properly, seriously and sincerely. Of course, as I have already told you, you have to follow my instructions. If you do that, leave the results on me. Okay. Moving on. This was introduction about the subject. Because I have done this, let me also give you a small introduction. I will not go into the depth of this. Only a small introduction of paper 6. See which is an optional paper. You can choose or you can avoid choosing this. In paper 6, see, there are 9 chapters total. Okay. Of course, there, may, there will definitely be. Hello. Hello. My audio video is clear, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. Listen. 
in paper 6 which is your elective paper actually giving the choice to students is a problem when there was no choice no everybody was studying a subject like iska also which no one liked when there was no choice now giving a choice is a problem and the problem is that the choice is not available now when you register for ca final till the time you fill your exam form you can change your elective do you have knowledge of that and we belong to the ca community we have always postponed everything to the last bit so which elective I decide later when the time comes to fill up the exam form you are still confused there will be some students who are 100% sure that I want elective paper international tax. Very few though, off late. Initially, most students were choosing international tax only, but off late, very few. There are some students who are 100% sure I will die, but I will not take international tax. Of course, you have that choice, you have that option, and I respect it. There will definitely be some students who are not sure. Sir, I don't know how to decide. Sir, which in sir, sir, imagine a student coming and asking me, Sir, which elective I should choose? And boss, I know only one of them. How do you expect me? I am biased. How do you expect me to solve this problem? I cannot give an answer. I can only tell you what is covered in this paper. Nine chapters. Out of which, seven are covered in 43 of DT. Seven chapters are covered already in direct times. And in that seven, these three are also there. Which we will be doing from ICI study material. Three chapters are these three only and from these 40 there are four chapters. Seven chapters of international. If you want me to name them, transfer pricing, double taxation avoidance agreement, authority for advanced ruling, non-resident taxation. They are covered in the 40 chapters. These three chapters if you want to know, there is a chapter called base erosion and profit shifting. Only if you want to know the names, base erosion and profit shifting, tax treaties and model tax conventions. These are topics of DT repeated in international tax repeated in fact i have to teach only two extra chapters here there is a chapter called e-commerce and there is a chapter called black money act e-commerce and black money act only two chapters i am not trying to do any kind of marketing for international tax i don't think i need it means obviously some students have already enrolled for international tax some students are of course, the, uh, you may have associated with me through a class. So, from the class only, you can come to know whether your package includes international tax or does not include. Uh, I think most cases it does not include as of now, but you can communicate. This communication is not between me and you directly. This communication, you can go and ask the respective class through whichever class you got associated because there are multiple students out here. I can tell you one thing that i need only three extra lectures after i finish direct tax if i finish direct tax on any particular day in three days i am able to complete international tax because i have to teach only two chapters i don't repeat these topics and because the effort is less whatever fees i charge is also less simple in direct tax it sometimes I believe that I will finish but the portion is not getting completed. But in international tax, three days because it's a matter of only two chapters, seven papers, uh, seven chapters are common with direct tax. That's the first advantage. Direct tax kills people with its size. International tax is like a set off. That's the first advantage. Second hidden advantage. Paper six and paper seven are back to back papers. Please think about it. So, you study these topics, appear for paper 6, come back and start studying for paper 7. You have to study 7 chapters less. And let's be honest, it is humanly not possible to study your entire portion of DT one day before your exam. That one and a half day is never going to be sufficient. Never sufficient. International tax just provides these two benefits. Of course, now it depends on whose instructions you follow. The people in your office, just one year senior to you, they are as ignorant as you. International is very difficult, very difficult, very difficult. With these instructions, 
I'll stick, I'll talk about what happened. Huh? When May 18, first time elective paper came, no? 95% students took international tax because of the two reasons that I gave you. Nobody was taking the other papers. May 19, international tax paper was the toughest paper ever. Students could not understand anything. Those students told the November 19 people, very difficult paper, change your elective. Those students moved to economic laws. November 19, economic laws was the toughest of all the electives. So going by institute tendency, whichever elective has maximum students, that is the toughest of all. If you go by that tendency, sometimes one of them is difficult, sometimes the other is difficult. Now, if I talk about the last exam, there is a student who got 82 marks in elective paper international tax. So don't go by that trend or tendency that last time economic laws was easy. So this time economic laws will be difficult or vice versa. Don't go by that tendency. I'll tell you how to choose your elective without being biased. Pay attention. There are six papers. First, you shortlist at least three. In that GFRS and case study is gone because nobody is going to even consider that. From the remaining four, international tax, risk management, economic laws, capital market, you know, remove maybe one or two. Keep only two or three as your option. Then bloody hell, go to www.icai.org, open the portion of these subjects. What is stopping you? You have got two, two GB data per day, no? Which you are consuming on all the useless stuff. No, no, except my lecture, obviously. Go to the website of ICAI. Check the portion. Check the chapters of international tax. I told you seven chapters are common. I can give false information also. No? I can lie no, if I want admissions. Possible. No, today is the first lecture. You can have trust issues. No? Possible. No, I can give false information. No. Hello. You check. No, check for yourself. Do that with at least two more papers and then decide which out of these I will be able to clear with comfort. The criteria is not so I want to work in international tax so I should go for that elective. Nobody is going to give you a job on the basis of your elective paper. Nobody. Nobody. Let me be clear. That is not the criteria. The criteria is strictly which paper I will be able to score maximum marks and check the portion for yourself and then decide whether you want to join or not. If you take international tax, again enrolling for class or no is also an option. I will be very clear and very very clear right now. I am not going to consume more than three lectures in that because I am not going to repeat anything that I have covered in direct tax. I am very clear about that. Anything taught in DT is not going to be repeated in international tax and consequently it leaves me with only two chapters and for two chapters I don't need I will be covering little bit the extra part over here in the seven topics but major focus will be on these two and I don't need more than three lectures three is also maximum it can get over in less than three, two and a half also okay I will be very very clear and I take it as an advantage because the size of international tax will actually set off the size of DT plus paper 6 and 7 being back to back papers. That is the only thing that I will discuss about elective paper now. Apart from that, I am not having any further discussion on the elective paper. So that is how your subject is placed and that is how we are going to cover. First, we will be going in the order only volume 1. Volume 1, we can interchange the topics. Volume 2, we will go in the order of the textbook and last, we will go to volume 3. Then we will do these three topics of international tax which are already linked with the topics that we have to cover here and then last we will be doing these two chapters. These are your two subjects which I will be covering of course paper 7 I am covering with everyone paper 6 for those who decide to continue after direct taxes over okay. Now next point in our intro hello hi today's class is introduction we are done with introduction about the handsome and talented faculty. We are done with introduction about the subject. Let's go to point number three. Now, do you remember what is point number three? Short term memory loss. 
पी वाई ए वाई नो और स्टडी मटेरियल प्रीवियस ईयर असेसमेंट देन विल गो टू स्टडी मटेरियल मैनर ऑफ लर्निंग एंड टैक्स रेट्स दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू डिस्कस बिकॉज ऑल द एक्सप्लेनेशन डिस्कशन ऑन अमेंडमेंट विल बी टॉट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ योर एप्लीकेबल लॉ एंड स्पेशली दन सॉरी मीन्स डोंट बी ऑफेंडेड बट दिस नवेंबर अटेम्प स्टूडेंट्स आर बिग 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 पेन एवरी ईयर एवरी ईयर आई टेल यू हाउ आई टेल यू वाई वी आर कंडक्टिंग अवर बैच फॉर द फॉलोइंग टू अटेम्प्ट मे ट्वेंटी टू एंड नवेंबर ट्वेंटी टू Please tell me which financial year is this? If you don't have people around you, if there is silence around you, then you can participate on the mic also. Otherwise, it will give us a feeling I am talking to a laptop. And those students whose videos are off for more than five minutes in any lecture, I will remove them from the meet. And you should know this that once a person is removed. From the meet, then you cannot log in. Okay, so I'll I'll just keep a track. If it is off for more than five minutes, I will not let you sit in class. Videos have to be mandatorily on because then only we will get a feeling that we are able to interact with each other. And more importantly, what happens is that being an online class, we are heavily dependent on internet technology. So sometimes what happens is that if the internet connection at my side is weak. i am talking 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 after 5 minutes i see nobody is replying what happened then i see i have lost my connection but with videos on what happens is all the students freeze together which immediately gives me the hint that the network is having problems and i correct it so i don't waste the time unnecessarily it's a very important thing videos have to be mandatorily on if it is off for more than 5 minute i will remove you from the meeting i am very clear on this okay some have already frozen even without network issues show some expressions move a bit let me know that you are awake and alive mitro which is the financial year when it is may 22 november 22 22 to 23 now please understand 22 to 23 is going on when you are writing your exam so you cannot compute income of 20 to 23 Which is the last year for which you can compute income, and thus the previous year applicable for your exam will be twenty one twenty two, and this system is not just in CA exams, any exam including B Com exams in our country. The last year will be the previous year, and the exam year will be your assessment year, assessment year twenty two twenty two. at least i should not be insulting you by telling you this that the year in which you earn income is called previous year and the immediate following year in which you calculate the total income of this year you calculate the tax liability of this year you file your returns etc that year is called the assessment year so first this is a previous year this is the assessment year next year this will become the previous year and this will become the assessment year for this year every year is a previous year and an assessment year i hope you are aware of that okay and previous year 21 22 is applicable why sir because 22 23 is going on when you are writing your exam that year is not over how can you calculate income income can be calculated only for 21 22 so if we talk about students who give the november 21 exam who will give in december now it is postponed do you understand the year is 21 22 So for November twenty one, the previous year was twenty twenty one and AY was twenty one twenty two. May twenty one, November twenty one, both exams. For May twenty two, November twenty two, the year has changed. This is going to be applicable. Cut. Assuming next year some of your friend or office junior or younger sibling joins CA final direct tax batch for May twenty three exam. do you understand the year will again change may 23 will be 23 24 so previous year will become 22 23 and assessment year will be 23 24 what i am trying to make you understand is 
लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स द पोर्शन ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी टू एंड नवंबर ट्वेंटी टू इज एब्सोल्यूटली 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 सेम इफ आई टीच एनी अमेंडमेंट इन दिस क्लास इट इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर मे एंड नवंबर वंस अवर पोर्शन गेट्स ओवर लाइक एन इडियट डू नॉट अप्रोच मी and ask me especially if you are a november student sir 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 now that our batch is over sir what will be my amendments let me be very clear today itself every amendment which i am covering here is applicable for both exams all the amendments which were introduced by the finance act of 2021 which was applicable for the financial year previous year 21 22 assessment year 22 23 are applicable for both these exams and whenever i will teach you an amendment i will write it like this in class with effect from ay 22 23 the law has changed every amendment will be taught to you like this in the textbook also i highlight the amendments and in the classroom teaching also i will highlight the amendment like this and tell you that this is something new the word amendment excites a ca student just like i get excited every time i hear bhautsa vada pav every time i hear that i get excited the ca students get excited the moment they hear the word amendment all amendments are going to be covered in the class itself there is not going to be a single thing that you have to study extra everything will be covered here everything will be covered okay so the applicable finance act will be of 2021 previous year 21 22 assessment year 20 to 23 for both exams may 22 as well as november 22 i hope we are very very clear kindly do not approach and ask sir what are our amendments everything that i have covered here is your amendment there will be no extra amendment okay however we live in the era of nirmala aunty and aunty can do anything you let let's be honest you can't trust her with anything and very much possible her full batch is over then she changes anything so what we always do is somewhere in the month of march generally it is the last week of march or first week of april our portion will get completed on the promised date too there will not be any delay in that but we will have one additional lecture it is not an amendment lecture please be clear it is not an amendment lecture we will be having a lecture on case laws so we'll finish the portion you must have already revised the portion once and because you know all the sections taught in class we will learn case laws about 4 hours we will take for case laws about 1 hour we will learn a concept called icds income computation and disclosure standards in that case law lecture so that's 5 hours and then we will reserve about 1 hour maybe less or more between our batch completion and your exam if at all aunty releases any new circular or any new notification in case she makes any change so we will keep that one hour if required if required we will keep that extra one hour in that case law lecture it is going to be a long class of about 6 or 7 hours but i strongly recommend you to attend that whenever we will schedule it you will get a message i strongly recommend please attend that lecture because case laws are very important icds is important and if there is any new circular or notification that is going to be covered in that class if she changes something drastically or terribly or brings some altogether new sections or provisions we might have to keep extra classes maybe two three lectures additional lectures that we will see because this is nirmala aunty i have to say all this that she can do anything if there are huge changes i will keep extra full fledged lectures two three lectures four five lectures whatever is required because objective is to see you successful whatever is required i am willing to do that but if it's a matter of half an hour or something we will cover in our case law class itself we don't need to keep separate lectures for that but please make sure that you attend the case law lecture so are we clear about the applicable previous year and assessment year all the amendments will be taught to you on the basis of finance act 21 you know why problem arises because before your may 22 exam do you understand in february there will be once again another budget which will then become the finance bill and the finance act the students get confused sir is this budget which comes in feb 
which is before our exam applicable ladies and gentlemen not applicable not applicable not applicable because the feb 22 budget will be applicable for the financial year 22 23 which is applicable for the assessment year 23 24 which is to be studied by students of may and november 2023 attempts for may and november 22 this is what is to be studied and that is the reason we merge them listen today there are ca inter clear students of 2020 who have to give a ca final in 23 and they have already approached sir i want to finish my tax portion now can i take admission in fact in ca coaching huge scams are going on in the name of early bird in the name of this that the basically they don't want you to go anywhere else so in the name of early bird if you take your admission then you can't change your mind i don't allow those students i don't think commercially when it is the matter of career of someone i cannot think commercially here. i clearly tell that student that the portion that i am covering right now is applicable only for these two exams so i don't recommend you to join but some are like no sir i am absolutely free right now and i will manage my amendments on on my own risk i want to join then that's your choice but my recommendation is don't come now next year your batch will be separate so the batches are conducted for attempt to attempt budget to budget and the applicable finance act will be of 21 for you guys it is going to be 21 previous year 21 22 assessment year 22 23 i do not want any confusion here even if you are a november 22 student there is not going to be any extra amendment applicable for your attempt which is not applicable now so anything that i am covering with may 22 is also applicable for november 22 are we clear about the applicable previous year assessment here the textbook has also been made in that manner the classroom coverage of portion will also be done in that manner no confusion with respect to this next part in the manner of learning is our study material along with being a handsome and talented faculty i have written quite a few books also in ca final if i talk about exam oriented study material i have made three books for the current year one of course the main textbook which is divided into 16 16 and 8 i already told you that the textbook is divided in three volumes volume 1 volume 2 volume 3 that's the main textbook which is going to cover your entire theory to the extent required to score an exemption everything is covered in a very easy and simple manner in a language that you are going to understand our textbook is covering everything i think with students lot of students who have already received the books you all can have a look at it and get an idea then i have written one book on question answer questions in ca final direct max by the way that's the only book that we will need in class because as far as the theory is concerned the entire income tax act control c control v huh? you all understood what income tax act control v i don't need the textbook for anything in class anything the entire law is copy paste okay we need the textbook in class only when we are doing question answer so in class you only need the question book for your study of course you have the textbook but in class you need only question answer which is also divided in the same manner 16 16 and 8 actually till last year these two were one book so there was only one textbook theory questions theory questions theory questions 40 chapters theory and then questions theory and then questions and what used to happen was students used to come and ask me sir why don't you release a compilation of question answers like other faculties are doing compilation of question answer best questions i asked them sir how many questions are covered by other people they said about 300 questions are covered I said gadeda my textbook is already covering more than 400 questions all i was required to do here was remove the questions from that word file and paste it in another word file and my question answer book is ready i have got 
more than 400 questions for you that is more and by the way we are going to solve all these questions in class 100 percent question answer coverage is also part of our classroom study of directness this is not self study full coverage will be done here more than 400 questions here full icai study material is going to get covered you will not find anything in icai study material in the form of a question which is not covered yet. full icai study material is covered of course sometimes what institute does is they ask the same question by changing only one adjustment so i incorporate the adjustment in the same question instead of adding two questions i cover both adjustments in the same question but otherwise all icai adjustments or all icai questions are covered in our book our book is also good enough if i talk about our textbook and mcq book that is good enough you don't need to do anything and there are people who study only this much and get their exams okay and apart from that i have also allotted one more book for you so every time we finish a chapter it is recommended that you solve because you have already received your fortunate the students of previous batches when the batch was going on the mcq book was never ready so they had to wait but you all are lucky enough that you all have already received the book even before commencement of the batch so it is my strong recommendation at the end of every chapter you immediately finish the mcqs also again it is divided chapter wise only and here we are covering about 1800 mcqs 100% icai data covered 100% covered okay and of course these three books are included in the package of all the three uh, all the all the students so i think all the students have already received the books and for those who have not received there can be some students who took individual enrollment uh, there are some students who directly enrolled with me so as you are aware that uh, your poster address is already taken that is already uh, forwarded to my admin team and my office team has already sent your books in courier for those who have not received the books till now in the next few days you can expect the book at any time and i think students who are associated through any class uh, the books are already sent to the class you can inquire with the class admin team with respect to your books and with your expressions i am understanding that most of you all have already received the book so these three books are covered in case of all the students and uh, of course in a lot of uh, cases it is already been allotted also apart from that i have written one more book in ca fine okay the name of the book is exemption actually this is the word which defines my career and my students ka career this is the word which defines what results my students have scored year after year attempt after attempt name of the book is exemption a handwritten book a colored handwritten book amendments in red color important points in uh, a different color section number in green color i have written a book in such a manner that quick revision can take place so of course these three books are already allotted but the handwritten book is not covered because all the handwritten notes i am going to make you write in class itself so if at all you are not comfortable in writing the notes in class itself then you can go and buy the book otherwise not required you can write the notes as and when we proceed further in class more about it i will tell you in the manner of learning part but this is currently the best seller ca final textbook this i am under a contract so i cannot distribute it free of cost it is under a contract with a company because the printing is very very expensive in colored books and consequently i am giving you this option it is not mandatory that you have to purchase it you can take down the class notes as and when i give you but of course in the book uh, we incorporate few memes hera feri memes devi prasad <laughs> you heard of totla tiwari 40 lakh no talit lakh so in the book we have incorporated some memes while i explain things to you in class i might just orally tell you the memes but the writing part will cover only the content at the end of every class i will give you the screenshot i'll talk more about it in manner of learning but three books are covered for all and the fourth book may not be covered i already told you the reason but it is not necessary to spend i can give you the class notes in class itself these are the four books that i have written for 
CA final out of which three are already allotted and issued to you that's about the study material next I come to a very very important part manner of learning how we are going to be going about our batch and this is the last point last point where you can relax and listen because after this I hope you remember what is point six in introduction hmm? Ah, so if at all you want to take down class notes, the writing part will start. You have to be a little active, bring some energy. Last thing that you just have to listen, sit and relax. Manner of learning. I will be very clear on this. My lecture will start at 7.00 sharp. In 11 years of my teaching career there has not been a single lecture which was started at 7-2 or 7-3 except the first lecture of every batch because students don't know who I am what I am and if you observe those students who were present in class at 7 o'clock are aware that I had already logged in at sharp 7 o'clock I sent a message in the chat box that I am starting in 5 minutes and I started at 7.5 because that was done purposely. I was ready. I am ready at 6.30 only. Because there is no alternative to discipline. I cannot waste time like this. There is an end date which I have committed to you. And I have to be disciplined. 7 means 7. It will not be 7.2 also from tomorrow. User ID and password of Zoom will be available to you. You don't need to wait for me to log in. If you are ready at 6.45, you can enter the user ID and password and log in. Means I have heard that some coaching classes, there are some app where only when the teacher activates the uh, app, only then the students can log in. In the case of Zoom, it is not like that. You can log in before me also. Every day before 7 o'clock, make sure that you keep your target at 6.50, 6.55 only. Because sharp 7, I will start. The class will go on till 9.50. I am not going to give you any break. In a 3 hour class, I don't need any break. You also do not deserve any break. I will stop class at 9.50. Last 10 minutes will be kept for two things. Only for two things. One, whatever I have written all throughout the class. You may want to take screenshots. Because everybody cannot write with the same speed at which I am writing. And plus you have to understand also now. Your main target here in class is not going to be to write. You all have not come here to copy the notes. If copying the notes is your only target, then this is not very expensive also. Okay. You all have come here to understand. So in class, if your concentration gets affected because of the copying part, don't waste your time. At the end of every class, I will wait and give screenshots of whatever I have written. In that class so then later on you can take it down you will have everything and plus while students are taking any screenshot you may have any doubt for the day that whatever sir you have taught in today's concepts you just write down the doubt somewhere so when I am in my flow try to avoid I am not saying that don't ask your doubt if it is very urgent then you ask immediately I will not stop you but if it is possible to wait till 950 then it is my suggestion that don't disturb the flow of the class wait at 950 I will make an announcement end of today's lecture anybody wants screenshots or has doubts can stay back rest can leave please thank you very much have a nice day those who want to leave will leave those who want screenshots I will be scrolling the book you can take screenshots while I am scrolling the book and while the scrolling is going on those who have got doubts can type in the chat box all you are required to do is type the word doubt and put it in the chat box to be honest and fair with students the person who has typed the word doubt first I will take the name and ask that person first in the order in which you type the word doubt in the chat box I'll announce type doubt whoever has typed first in the order of that I will be taking your doubts just like we do at the end of every physical lecture those who have doubts can stay back the student who comes first it's a cue so here you have to put the word doubt only one word doubt in the chat box and in that order I will answer the doubts also and in the meantime simultaneously screenshots also will be provided we are going to reserve the last 10 minutes of every lecture for doubts and screenshots 
and because we are already reserving that it automatically becomes a class of 2 hours and 50 minutes there is not going to be any break sharp 7 950 can sometimes be 945 also sometimes it can be 955 also because if there is a concept going on i cannot stop in between okay i only promise you this much that after 945 i will not start any new concept but whatever is going on i have to complete sometimes it can be 10 o'clock also okay but i will avoid that to the extent possible as far as the timetable is concerned i think you all are already aware of the timetable we are taking class currently for 10 days till 10th of september then actually <laughs> i have a batch scheduled from the 13th of september in kerala 13 to 27 and thus as per the timetable which is already provided to you i am going to resume from 1st october i think you guys are aware of that no kerala 60 percent of countries coronavirus cases kerala that batch is actually in a very very under a very very big big question mark of whether it will be conducted or not conducted mostly it is going to get cancelled only in case i want to continue without the break of this 20 days i will not directly communicate with you i will communicate with the respective classes and those students who have taken individual enrollment i will take individual communication only if every student agrees even if there is one student who has a problem then we will not do it if each and every student agrees then we will not without taking the break otherwise for the time being the timetable is first to 10th september and then first october to 30th november that is going to be your timetable monday to friday 7 to 10 saturday also 7 to 10 now i want to know right now only is it possible to extend the saturday's class by by you know one hour or one and a half hour maximum till 11 30 if anybody has an issue or problem and you please inform me right now only it's only a plan yes means you have issues you are saying yes or you don't have any what is the issue please tell me Achha, only that for one month no babu september mein we are having class only for 10 days no in the current timetable first october onwards so there will be no problem no sudarshan you are tamilian or malayali Achha. Your surname matches the surname of quite similar to the surname of our finance minister, huh? by the way. Don't be offended if I make fun of her. Huh? I am making fun of an individual. Only an individual. Okay. It has got nothing to do with the fact that she is a lady, that the woman community gets angry or she is a Tamilian that people from Tamil Nadu get offended. It is only one individual whom I am making fun of. It is not any community or creed or state or group of people. Who I am making fun of. Okay. And Sudarshan also agrees that sir, whatever you are saying is right only. So, what is the need to get offended here? Okay. Chal. Let's come to the point. Anyways, if we are going to, I think he is the only person. Anyways, September may 10 days. Supposingly, we ignore and uske andar, we are going to get only one Saturday mostly. Or maybe two. 11th is also there. Now, we will not extend. During these 10 days, we will not extend. But after October, I don't think any problem. See, the whole idea is that. If we get more duration, then we will be able to complete your portion faster. And also because I want to give you one day holiday in the week, no. I am giving you Sunday off, no. So, if we take at least one, actually what required, it is required because no matter how much we push ourselves, our body has got some limits and it does require some relaxation, mental, physical both. We need common sense. Unfortunately, after entering CA, common sense goes away. And we are only here to slog. It does not work that way. Your planning has to be so perfect and accurate that you don't have last minute rush with respect to anything. So, if we have a little extra duration on Saturdays, then we can with full respect and peace take our Sunday off. As simple as that. And still manage to finish our portion. By the decided date of 30th November, we will finish DT. 
and as I already told you, maximum three extra lectures within the first three four days of December, we will also be able to complete elective paper international tax for those students who are enrolling. That is going to be our timing and timetable. Then next, while I am teaching you every chapter, I already told you that we are covering forty three chapters. Everything that I will teach you, I will write and teach, write and teach. My handwritten book almost will get covered, of course. Other than some examples which I might give you orally. If I give you oral example and I don't write in the uh, in the handwritten colored book, that example will also be in writing. If there is some comedy meme which I will give you orally, that picture, you know that government auntie. You heard of her? Big guy, a government. You've seen Mirzapur. If you've not seen Mirzapur, no, then you are desperately, you know, you badly, you know, you you're missing something in life. Okay. Acha Hera Ferry, everybody must have seen, no? Yes, sir. I can give you those examples orally in class, but in the book it will be in picture format. I will be incorporating it in that book. That is the only difference. Otherwise, I am going to write everything. Everything. If you can manage concentrating in class with writing, then no problem. But if your concentration gets disturbed, then either you wait for screenshots at the end of the class or you directly take the handwritten book from the market. But please make sure under all circumstances, priority has to be to listen to what I am talking and not copy what I am writing. Priority has to be understanding things that are being taught. Are we absolutely, absolutely clear about this? Okay. One more thing. It's a part of we are doing this manner of learning well apart. So all this I can tell you today only. Huh? Tomorrow I don't have time to all, to, for, for all this. Today is the only day when I can discuss these things. Till the time I am doing the portion, students are not there. Just coming at 7, attending class going away. After the batch gets completed, especially these obnoxious South Mumbai students, sir, they talk in an accent, huh? foreign accent. Sir, now that our portion is over, so how do I go about the subject? What should be my approach towards this? If you want the correct approach towards the subject, if you want to follow instructions and get your exam exemption, then listen right now only. The only mantra of success is to study every day. Ask any rank holder. I have not been a rank holder. I wanted to get one, but I could not get a rank. But you ask any rank holder, one thing they will all say that you cannot wait for the coaching class to complete your portion and then start your self study. Your self study has to be simultaneous. The study leave that you get from your office is only for revision. So if I take a three hour class, you will not need more than 20 minutes per day. And don't tell me that you don't have 20 minutes also in a day for your revision. You are doing CA, you have left, you are left with only one exam CA final. And for that revision, if you don't have 20 minutes, what the hell are you doing in life? It is my humble and sincere request for those who want to repeat the results of past students. Please make sure, please make sure that you revise every day. 3 hour class, 20 minutes, good enough, sufficient enough. Good enough, sufficient enough. 3 hour class, 20 minutes is good enough. Are you following? Every day revise. What will happen is, if you revise every day, you will also be able to ask me your doubts in the last 10 minutes. Sir, I have a doubt in yesterday's class. Only those students can have doubts who have revised. What it will also help you to check is, as and when I finish your chapters. I already told you that my question answer book is covering questions from ICAI study material. I can give false information also. No? I can misguide also. No? I can lie. No, I can be a liar. Can you not check it for yourself? at the end of every chapter whether i have actually covered or no if at all you want to do anything extra like sir 400 questions are good enough but i want to do extra then i'll tell you what i have not covered i suggest 
at least four attempt rtps you should do at least minimum your attempt and three past attempts so supposingly you are may 22 student so may 22 november 21 may 21 and november 20 or maybe if you are november 22 then november 22 may 22 november 21 may 21 your attempt and past three attempts of course if the assessment year is different there will be some changes in the answer huh? but you solve the sum according to your assessment year are we clear on this your solution should be based on your assessment year but four rtps in this the past rtps are more important understand the, the technicality here with common sense by the time the rtp of your exam is released the question paper is already set rtps are released very late exams take place then two months nothing happens then result comes then form filling date comes then they see how many students then they release rtp rtps will come about one and a half month before your exam by that time your question paper is set if the paper setter wants questions of rtps they will first target past rtps they are more important than your present rtp if you are understanding what i am saying okay ha huh, you will find that a lot of questions are covered mcqs all are covered there is not a single rtp which will not be covered all are covered. of course see while the book is already printed the last rtp released was of may 21 so november 21 rtp is not yet released only i hope you understand before printing of book everything is covered anyways whenever a new rtp comes we record those rtp lectures also as of now a trend is going on in ca coaching for uh, uploading revision lectures uploading rtp lectures and all that on the respective youtube channels of all the faculties so go by the flow and in the flow everybody is doing it and we are no different so rtps will be recorded and uploaded anyways okay but you will find a lot of subjective questions also from the rtps which are already covered in our textbook there might be some questions in these four rtps which are not covered in our 400 questions mcqs will be totally covered but some subjective questions may not be covered so what i have covered fully i am clearly telling you that very honestly and what i have not covered that also i am clearly telling you very honestly so if at all you want to do anything extra you do four attempt ka rtps so when i finish the chapter or when i am taking class every day revise for 20 minutes at the end of every chapter check the ic ai study material questions mostly you will find all the questions are done only in class and then once our portion gets over you can go and solve the sums from the rtps also this is going to be your manner of learning please make sure that you attend class with discipline and diligence because i think you all are aware in most cases uh, there is no question of any kind of video backup or anything there is nothing of that sort i think you it, this is already communicated almost to everyone so please make sure that you don't miss the lecture be present on time and attend the entire lecture in full sincerity because missing anything can cost you badly with this whatever instructions i had to give from my side in point one two three four five introduction about faculty subject previous year assessment year study material manner of learning mostly everything is done only apart from that as and when we proceed further in the syllabus i'll continuously keep on giving you instructions also last this is not an instruction that you have to mandatorily follow it recommendation i already told you that i will be teaching everything in writing please make sure you maintain these handwritten notes if you cannot manage simultaneous copying because it disturbs your cooperation or your concentration in class it's okay take the screenshots at the end of the class and if you don't want to do that also of course that handwritten book is readily available that's a different thing but you have an option of doing it without spending but whether you buy that handwritten book or whether you take down the class notes whatever you do please make sure that you have these notes please make sure sir why sir sir you have one and a half day for your last revision last day you will get only one and a half day you may dedicate 15 days two months for classroom coaching 15 days for first revision 10 days or seven days for second revision maybe four days for your third revision 
बट अल्टीमेटली यू हैव टू कवर इट इन वन एंड हाफ डे नो राइट फ्रॉम योर फर्स्ट स्टडी यू हैव टू कीप दैट लास्ट डे इन माइंड Then okay, today I am doing this chapter in so much detail. On that last day, what is going to be my approach? I'll talk about what Asifa said in her interview. Asifa is that student who scored eighty-one marks in direct tax. She shared her subject approach strategy through a video, and that video also was uploaded on my channel. It is still there. What was her strategy? she has shared that entire video in english language she is from kerala so a little bit you will find that south indian accent in her uh, talking but you will understand what she is talking because she is talking in english i would like to categorically mention one thing that she said that while i was studying i was continuously preparing notes handwritten notes or anything in the form of charts which will help me to revise the subject one day before the exam because without that you will not be able to study you'll be in a complete chaotic situation which chapter to do which chapter to not do which chapter to do in detail which chapter to do in less detail it is going to be a completely chaotic situation and to avoid that the best option best option to avoid that is to be ready with this class note hand it a note this will serve as your revision book one day before your exam so it's a recommendation that you take down the notes that i am making you write in class if you cannot take it simultaneously i have already told you last 10 minutes i will be reserving for screenshots hello and if you don't want that also there is also that third option if at all you are interested in doing that that is about manner of learning if you are clear about everything that i have discussed till now then i will go to the last part of my introduction that is tax rates if you are absolutely clear with respect to study material with respect to manner of learning if you have any query make sure you sort it right now itself with respect to time table any issue solve it right now because once i start this there is no looking behind obviously it won't get over today mostly it won't get over tomorrow also but in the third lecture we will be able to finish tax rates that is our first chapter introduction first chapter in our textbook is only introduction introduction will take three lectures hi sir good morning ek yeah. second ha nafis bye sir because in tax rates i have to teach you old rates and there is something called a new regime recently introduced in income tax new regime of tax so till 2 years ago there used to be only one tax rate applicable to everyone now we have two you have to calculate as per old calculate as per new and take whichever is beneficial are you following what i am saying and consequently it will take a lot of time it won't get over today mostly it won't get over tomorrow in the third lecture definitely we will be able to finish and completing tax rates means completion of our introduction chapter understood and this is also that stage from where your writing work will commence if at all you want to take down class notes in class itself writing part will start from here this is that stage from where you start writing in class or you start taking screenshots in the last 10 minutes of class till now whatever i did was only introduction 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 relevant for exam but not something that you have to learn this is something on which there will be questions in exam there will never be a question in exam define how handsome is your faculty no is your faculty a chartered accountant no how many textbooks he gave you in class but on this there will be a question in your exam you have to learn this for your exam and this is the biggest part of my introduction once i start this there is no looking behind and therefore i want to clarify all the doubts about the previous points here itself so that we can focus on our core subject the actual teaching part will start now now is the time
Okay, so yes, Nafis. Yeah, sir. So I have a listed client uh, who said our period is very short. So the first week of October, I just ensure that it is from seven to ten. First week of October, then there how many Saturdays? Yeah, in the second October, so I have to work on weekends and we are very short. Yeah, let's be honest, if 2nd October was not a Saturday also, let's assume that it was not a Saturday, it was a Monday or a Wednesday or a Thursday, then anyways the lecture would have been of double duration on 2nd October because it's an official public holiday. You know why it's a public holiday? Yeah, I know. I acquainted with the holidays. Huh, that everybody is. That's the most important thing in every, every corporate office. Okay. So, listen, let October come. We'll, we'll talk about it when October comes. Okay. Just relax in life. Don't take so much load. Okay. And, and in, in case, in case at my discretion, I am extending any lecture or any date. On that date, if any student misses anything due to genuine reasons, I am available to support that particular. I will make sure that your purpose is solved okay you will not have any trouble that's my assurance to you don't worry about that anything else no, that's all. Thank you. excellent then let us go and now learn the tax rates which will be applicable for previous year now you have to participate in class because productivity will come you know i will make sure that it does not look like an online lecture you need to get this feeling that we are sitting in a classroom and learning so participate as much as you can to make the class effective. Here my request goes to all the students who have the privilege of people not being around you, vehicles not being around you, pets not being around, uh, no, one, no one being around you and having a good quality mic to be more active in class. In video there is no excuse as I have already told you. If it is off for more than five minutes, you will be removed from class. In video, I am not interested in looking at your background. I am not even interested who is behind you. I am interested in checking and whether you are awake or sleeping in class. There are some who are, you know, sleeping on the bed and watching. After a few minutes, they are fast asleep. I want to check that if you are in class, you have to be awake. That's important. That is why video has to be off. As far as audio is concerned, we don't want disturbance and thus only if you don't have sound issue it's a request now that only you can decide whether there is sound issue or no if there is no sound issue then be a little active in class that will keep the atmosphere of the classroom lively you will not get a feeling of an online lecture you will get the feeling of a classroom lecture and listen how is an online live lecture better than a recorded class why should this be preferred see physical classroom lectures are the best there is no replacement to that there is no alternative in the present circumstances especially in maharashtra we do not expect educational institutions to open anytime soon considering these circumstances we are left with no choice we will have to study online and in online also, online live is better than recorded because you get to interact with me. Okay. Once it is a recorded class, you will never be able to talk to the faculty in the recorded class. So, please make sure that you utilize the benefit of the recorded class. Are you following? So, please participate. And I have already told you. Everything will be taught to you based on the applicable previous year and assessment year for your exam. So, the applicable previous year for your exam is previous year. Everybody has people around. Previous year 21 22. Assessment year 21 to 23. That is the income tax rates given in the finance act of 2000. 21. This is common sense. This is general knowledge. Even if you are a non-CA background person, you should know this. Income tax rates are not given in Income Tax Act. Income tax rates are announced every year in something which you know by the name of budget. Actually, why do they call it a budget? 
कॉमन सेंस है ना कॉमन सेंस दिस इज नॉट टैक्स फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर इज द प्लानर फाइनेंशियल प्लानर ऑफ द कंट्री फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज टू डिसाइड दैट इन द अपकमिंग फिजिकल ईयर इट इज ऑलवेज द अपकमिंग ईयर सो इन द मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी वेन दे अनाउंस द बजट दैट फॉर द अपकमिंग ईयर सो फेब्रुवरी ट्वेंटी वन वॉज फॉर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू February 22 will be for 2223 in the upcoming fiscal year what are the expected sources of government revenue and what are the expected expenditures of government first one hour one and a half hour they will speak about that i propose to raise 5000 crore from here i propose to spend 2000 crore on defense i propose to spend 500 crore on smart cities that is how they allocate budget and after speaking this for about one you must have never watched a budget speech on tv and that is why i am sharing this with you after speaking for about an hour or so then the finance minister says i would now like to present my tax proposals where they introduce two things in every budget one they bring amendments every year general system is to bring yearly amendments but in the era of nirmala aunty anything can happen she brings monthly amendments daily amendments she can bring hourly amendments also you you know she can do anything wo stree hai she can do anything seriously okay and second thing which is given in every budget is tax rates the tax rates are announced in the budget when the finance minister is announcing they are only proposals i don't know whether you have this knowledge but everything spoken by the finance minister on the budget day is not the final law it is only a proposal they call it a bill bill then there will be discussion on the bill the members in the parliament will propose changes to the bill that ma'am this provision is not proper correct it please after those changes the bill will be passed by lok sabha the lower house of parliament it will be passed by rajya sabha the upper house of parliament and then in india there is one person only to felicitate others kon who <laughs> president of india you know who is the president of india right now mr ramnath kovin thank god you didn't say prithviraj chavan ramnath kovin that day when the president gives his stamp approved we say that the bill has been assented by the president of india that finance bill will now become the finance act for the upcoming year so 2021 was for 21 22 and of course if 21 22 is your previous year then of course the assessment year will be 22 23 this is the year in which you will earn your income and this is the year in which you will calculate your total income and tax liability you will assess what you have earned because listen if the income earning activity is going on from 1st april till 31st march even on 31st march afternoon you cannot calculate your total income you have common sense because in the evening you can earn some extra income which will change your total income and tax both you can calculate your income only on 1st april of the next year and therefore we call it the assessment year so while we are calculating in this year the calculation is for this year this is the calculation year this is the earning year because calculation year we call it assessment year one big question sir one big question sir we are in ca final but till now we don't know sir in income tax why is my current year called my previous year see ultimately this is your income earning year this is your tax liability year this is the year in which you are earning income no this is my current year sir why is my current year called previous year sir sir why sir are sir by the time you sit down with your computation you write one by one salary house property pgbp by the time you start your calculation the year is already over it has become the previous year because you can sit down for calculation only in the assessment year because this year is over we call it previous year i know you are already aware of this but as a matter of clarification understood the applicable previous year and assessment year and these are the tax rates which have to be studied 
by students of May 22 and November 22 exams. And I am going to, of course, teach you first the entire old regime of taxation. And then last year in income tax, they introduced something called a new regime of taxation. New regime of taxation I will teach only after old regime is over. First I will complete old regime, then only I will go to new regime. No problem. Okay, shall we? So, we are learning tax rates of which finance act? 2021. Very good. Previous year? Very good. Assessment year? 22, 23. I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart all these students who are, I want only this much from you. Let's be honest. I don't expect anything from you. I want only participation. If I, if I tell you something and I ask you, have you understood? Tell me yes or no. I just expect a yes or a no. If you say yes, I go ahead. If you say no, I repeat that point. I expect that much. And even those who have sound issues around them, this is a reason why I make you keep your video on. You can say, That will also make me understand that you are at least following what is happening in class. That is why videos have to be on, mandatorily on. Okay. So, Finance Act of 21, previous year 21, 22, assessment year 22, 23, applicable for May 22 as well as November 22, we will learn tax rates. And in our income tax laws, tax rates are given assessi by assessi. Assessees in income tax are divided in seven categories. And tax rate is not same for all. Tax rate is different from assessi to assessi. I am taking a risk. I am asking you something that I have not taught. Do you know which are the seven categories of assessees in income tax? Person, definition of person, seven categories. If you know, then you can participate. Now, individual, individual easily, easily, easily. Take it easy, one by one. Individual. Okay, very good. Next. Company, very good. Firm. firm. HUF. HUF. AOP, BOI, Association of Person, Body of Individuals. Trust. Two more. Trust will be a part of AOP only. Trust will be a part of AOP only. Tax rates are going to be same as AOP. There is something called local authority liable for tax. And lastly, there is something called artificial juridical person. Seven categories of assessing. Individual HUF, company firm, AOP, BOI, local authority and artificial juridical person. What I want you all to understand is tax rates have been given assessi by assessi. Assessi by assessi. Okay. So, we will go also assessi by assessi. First, we will finish our entire old regime of taxation and then only we will go to new regime. So, while I am teaching you the tax rates, slab rates of old regime, you don't start saying, no, no, sir, these are, uh, these slabs have changed, no? I am aware that they have changed. I am aware of Everything that is happening in taxation, I keep track on daily basis. That is my job. I am aware. But you need to keep the patience of waiting for old regime to get over. Then we go to the new regime. In the existing taxation regime, I will start with tax rates of the first assessee in income tax. That is individual. As I said, we will go assessee by assessee. First assessee for whom I am going to do tax rates with you is your assessee called mitro what individual you all understand the word mitro no huh. it's a scam in itself but let's not get into the political discussion okay individual you will be shocked surprised to know this but the truth is our income tax law has defined individual they have said what is an individual? Individual means a natural person. Wow. Wow. Natural person. Born out of a natural process. Rubbish. Reproduction in animals is also a natural process. Reproduction in plants. Photosynthesis. <gasps> Sunlight, water. You have been to school or directly came in CA? You have studied science in school, photosynthesis. That is also a natural process. What the hell are you saying? 
नेचुरल पर्सन और टू बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर एंड परफेक्ट वी आर बेसिकली टॉकिंग अबाउट ह्यूमन बींग्स टैक्स रेट फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स इज योर फर्स्ट कैटेगरी दैट इज इंडिविजुअल प्लीज डोंट इंटरचेंज दीज वर्ड दिस इज ह्यूमन बींग डोंट मेक इट बींग ह्यूमन अदरवाइज इट विल बी अ मर्डर हु इज किलिंग ह्यूमन बींग्स स्लीपिंग ऑन द फुटपाथ don't interchange the words okay human being hmm. some hardcore bhai fans have already been offended natural person means human being ka tax rate is category then of course as and when we move further into the categories we have tax rate for huf company firm all of them we'll study them one by one currently let's focus on category 1 individual where human beings are covered if human beings are covered then let's be clear are these tax rates applicable to all of you some are like sir we are ca we are ca article sir we don't have any income sir where is the question of tax when there is no income see truth agreed but you are not understanding my question my question is not whether you have income i know you are a ca article my question is if you have income will these tax rates be applicable to you are you covered in the definition of individual are you a human being even if your principal does not treat you like one are you a human being yes yes you are i am a married man married since 7 years of course i also do not get the treatment of a human being we all that that's common across all the married males across the world but for tax purposes i am also covered here whether it is sachin tendulkar sachin tendulkar you heard his name someone like sir he is god nahi nahi for income tax people he is an individual these tax rates are applicable to him also whether you are sachin tendulkar whether you are lata mangeshkar no matter who you are whether you are mr bachchan whoever you are these tax rates are going to be applicable obviously if you have income tax can arise only for those who have income if you don't have income there is no question of any income tax i hope you have the common sense to understand this hello so if you have income what are going to be your tax rates for human beings natural person so very quickly tell me am i covered here yes or no am i covered here yes is sachin tendulkar covered here yes yes i already gave you this example but what about rajnikanth yes also covered huh is also covered he is also covered very good in the movie robot for those of you all who have seen it you know that he made a robot called chitty those of you all who have not seen it i am telling you he made a robot called chitty he had eyes nose ears he looked like a human being will he get covered here acha by the way by the end of the movie the scientist whose name was vasikaran incorporated human feelings also in the robot do you know that if you don't know i'm telling you the scientist incorporated feelings inside the robot exhibiting showing all characteristic of a human being now will he be covered here no ultimately it's a machine and this point is going to cover only natural person only human being a robot a machine is not going to be covered here understood where it will get covered we will see but at least it will not be covered here here we are going to cover only natural person and that also will be divided into three categories tax rates will change from category to category individuals will be divided in three categories and their tax rate will be based on category we are all human beings but we may not be in the same category we will have to check where are we category a category b or category c tax rates are different in category a we have our normal individuals mitro it does not mean that category b and c are abnormal na? don't draw stupid conclusions please 
category B and C are specifically defined. Anybody who does not fall in category B and C will fall in category A. What is category A? Anyone who does not go in B and C will come. Okay. So, actually, let us go and understand what is category B and C first. Some are like, sir, we already know this. Hey, hey, hey. Abul, what? Sixty years, eighty years. Person above. He said. Sudarshan said. Person above the age of sixty and eighty. Let's see what income tax is. Any person who is a senior citizen will fall in category B. Sixty years ka benchmark he has given. I have not given anything. He said, person more than sixty years and very senior citizen. Some income tax books, some authors also say super senior citizen. As per Sudarshan, it is more than 80 years. I have not said anything. In principle, at least most of us are aware of this. Sir, they are senior citizen. So, out of respect, we will take less tax from category B compared to category A. That means, their tax liability will be lower out of respect towards the seniority and because they are even further senior they have more seniority their tax will be even lower that means highest tax second and lowest or can i say lowest tax second and highest tax highest tax will be paid by these people now who are these people people who are less than 60 years going by what sudarshan has said i have not said anything People who are of the age below 6 years. Can I say all of us are covered over here? Hey, Mitro. 11 years of teaching. But I have not crossed 60. Huh? I have crossed half of it. 60 I have not crossed. I also fall here. All of you all also fall here only. One day when we cross this age. We will get the benefit of category B. What is the benefit? Liability will be lower. And one day if at all we reach all the way here then even lower. These are in principle the three categories. So, what is a normal individual? Less than 60. But Sudarshan ji and everybody else, what I now want you all to understand is half knowledge is worse than no knowledge. And in the very first lecture of mine, I want to eliminate overconfidence altogether. I don't want any overconfidence. I want you to be confident, but not overconfident. And thus, Sudarshan said more than 60 years, more than 80 years. Okay. That means 55 will come here, 65 will come here, and 85 will come here. We understood that. The benchmark of becoming senior citizen is 60 years. The benchmark of becoming very senior citizen is 80 years. My question is. Can a person be of exact 60 years age? Not greater, not less, exact 60 years. Can a person be of exact 80 years age? Not greater than 80 or less than 80. Exact 60, exact 80. My question is, if my age is exact 60, will I come here? You know less than will go here, greater than will go here. What about equal to? This thing called equal to is a very, very dangerous thing in taxation. Very dangerous thing. Because students always learn the answer for less than, the answers for greater than. They never have any answer for equal to. Especially in TDS chapter. If I talk about TDS, the only thing you know about TDS is my boss suffers after 30,000. Professional fees. Other than that, you don't know anything in TDS. And this 30,000 also. Listen, that means the client will not deduct TDS of audit fees 25,000. The client will deduct TDS of audit fees 35,000. But what if the audit fees is exact 30? You don't know. An institute will target that only. They will strike the hammer in a way that it hurts you most. So, please give respect to the term 
इक्वल टू ऑल थ्रू आउट योर पोर्शन हां जी तो टुडे आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू वॉट यू थिंक इफ माई एज इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी डू आई बिकम सीनियर सिटीजन बाई द वे इफ आई एम आस्किंग यू अबाउट सिक्सटी दिस इज ऑल्सो अबाउट एट्टी सो इफ योर आंसर इज येस सो इक्वल टू सिक्सटी एंड इक्वल टू एट्टी बोथ विल कम इन द रिस्पेक्टिव कैटेगरी एंड नो देन बोथ विल नॉट कम एवरीथिंग दैट आई एम डिस्कसिंग आई एम डिस्कसिंग फॉर बोथ कैटेगरीज हा इक्वल टू सिक्सटी और इक्वल टू एट्टी विल आई बी कवर्ड so then some over confidence should already be killed here itself equal to 60 will make you eligible for the category b and equal to 80 will make you eligible for the category c my respect goes out to all those students who participated in the form of yes or no those who said yes were right those who said no were wrong but they realized that they are wrong they were wrong in class they will not go wrong in exam those who did not say anything are the actual losers if you understand here those who gave the wrong answer in class is anybody who gives wrong answer in class is never a loser you will never be in my class i will be very clear on this you will never be insulted humiliated if you ever give me a wrong answer i will love you for participating in class i am very clear about my system and i'll hate you if you don't participate in class that means you are doing a favor by coming to class ultimately i am already a ca you have to become one okay so to conclude the point at exact 60 years do i get the benefit of senior citizen yes at exact 80 years do i get the benefit of very senior citizen that means can i say this category is individuals who are less than 60 years or can i conclude ladies and gentlemen that means 0 to 59 will come here because exact 60 will come here up to 79 and 80 or anything above 80 80 and above will come here this is the breakup of individuals into three categories so highest tax will be paid by people of the age 0 to 59 a little lower of 60 to 79 and the lowest of 80 and above at least that you all understood as and when your age increases your tax liability will keep on reducing tax liability is inversely proportional statistical term tax liability is inversely proportional to your age age will increase liability will go down understood yes. now those students who gave wrong answer in equal to have already understood that i should not be over confident with respect to anything i will be in class with full focus and participation but there are some students who gave the right answer i said is equal to covered in senior and very senior you said yes sir and was your answer right hmm i need to kill over confidence of these people also no it is very important in the first lecture itself to so listen listen true or false every person's birthday will come on 1st april only false false nahi can birthdays come in the middle of the year yes they can there are people born all throughout the year i was born in december advance tax due date 15 december i want to teach tax advance tax due date hai, my birthday listen now then obviously i was born in a particular year after 60 years can i say i will complete or i'll not uh, uh, discuss myself if if i take you as an example you will have no issue no say nafis i take you as an example you have no objection Nafis, if I ask you your date, date of birth, what is your birth? When is your birthday? Eight December. Eight. Uh, legends are born in December. We all know that. In exact one week. So if one Friday is your birthday, exact next Friday will be my birthday. It's a gap of exact seven days. Eight December. Excellent. Which year, if you don't mind revealing your age? Yeah, it's one triple nine. Nine nine. One triple phone number. Nineteen ninety nine. Say no. Nineteen ninety nine. 
okay that means can i say in 2059 on 8th of december you will complete 60 years of age come on 2059 i am saying no to so listen this is the year 2059 previous year 5960 assessment year 6061 from 1st april to 8th december you know nafis is 59 years old yes. and from 8th december to 31st march he is 60 years old very coincidentally year is also 5960 so this period is 59 years old and this period he is 60 years old so obviously can i say for that year we will have to do proportionate these many months tax as per senior citizen these many months tax as per normal individual nahi no so ladies and gentlemen i have to be exact 60 and exact 80 that everybody understood but when on 1st april on 31st march middle of the year more than 6 months i have to be senior citizen in the year what is your answer what about a person whose birthday is falling in december and part of a year he is senior citizen part of a year he is not a senior citizen and my discussion is not just for 60 years my discussion is for 60 and 80 both ha huh? hello i am discussing this for both because if in 2059 he will be 60 years old and 2079 he will be 80 years old same question will come again hello so please answer when do i have to become and here my target is those students who were dancing sir i gave right answer equal to is covered you are my primary target right now when do i have to become senior citizen चलो वेरी गुड चलो तो एटलीस्ट सम ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस ऑफ सम पीपल आर फर्दर एलिमिनेटेड बिकॉज द करेक्ट आंसर इज एंड प्लीज पे अटेंशन आई एम राइटिंग इट अंडर बोथ हा अंडर सिक्सटी एंड एट्टी बोथ बिकॉज दिस रूल इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर सिक्सटी ऑल्सो दिस रूल इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर एट्टी ऑल्सो एट एनी टाइम ड्यूरिंग द प्रीवियस इयर मीन्स listen shruti and everyone else please listen supposingly a person was born on 31st of march 1159 pm hospitals give us time of birth also no they do in the case of my son they gave the exact time 48 pm and 32 seconds i wonder i wonder who was busy checking the time when the doctor was extracting the baby i, I still wonder and by the way in uh, hospitals of uh, kolkata my wife is from kolkata am uh, i ke bangla bujhte pari when i i spoke about so many languages i i can uh, speak hindi english marathi gujarati marwadi malayalam punjabi bangla i know so many language. i can understand all of them speak in some of them okay listen the doctor was busy doing the operation who checked the time i don't know but hospital gave us the time 4832 no one was checking the time i saw that for sure so hospitals at least do give us the time of birth on that basis people actually make their horoscope their janam patri and all that correct no 1159 pm is your time of birth after 60 years on 31st march you will complete 60 years age at 11:59 pm means you were of the age 60 years only for 1 minute during the year no time of birth is 11:59 hello you are still going to be considered as senior citizen for that entire year and very senior also all the discussion is for 60 and 80 both 60 and 80 both any time during the previous year includes 31st march 1159 pm any time during the year okay so i think some more over confidence is eliminated but even now i have people i had i definitely saw someone saying sir any time during the previous year so basically which was the right answer and basically now everybody has understood if your age is 60 or 80 on 31st march also still you are eligible for the reduction in tax rate of category b and category c 
मित्रो आई हेव नॉट क्लोज द ब्रैकेट हु टोल्ड यू टू क्लोज द ब्रैकेट नो देर इज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉल्ड सीबीडीटी सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस डिटेल अबाउट दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विल बी टॉट टू यू इन अ चैप्टर कॉल्ड आई टी अथॉरिटीज एंड दर पावर्स आई विल टीच यू अबाउट सीबीडीटी इन कंप्लीट डिटेल nobody changes the battery that is how we make our remotes work cbdt will be taught to you in detail when we study the chapter it authorities and their powers first chapter of volume 2 so that's after 16 chapters please understand but if you want to know what is cbdt whichever language you understand it is the daddy pops father papa abba achan pitashri whichever language you understand of the income tax department if i ever ask you who is the bap of income tax department who is the father of income tax department cbdt sir why sir because anything that the cbdt says all it authorities from the senior most officer in the department that is the chief commissioner of income tax to the junior most officer of the department that is the inspector senior or junior top to bottom everyone in the income tax department has to follow all instructions given by cbdt once the father gives instruction the children have to follow no some are like no no sir in our generation it is the other way around sir ha barabar hai but you are the millennial kids no income tax act is 1961 in that generation once the father said anything the children had to follow i am from the generation of the 80s even in my generation my father used to speak something i never had the courage to look into his eyes while talking to him even when i used to be the first ranker of my class i used to talk to him like this i got first rank i never had the courage preferably if he is in one room i would choose to be in any other room I never could never speak also in front of him never even in my generation in your generation it is exactly the same thing but it is the fathers who are not able to speak in front of the children now it is exactly the other way around exactly the other way around what in 1961 once the cbdt gives any circular any instruction then everybody in the income tax department has to comply they have to abide by it and that is why we call it the father the papa the daddy of income tax department cbdt released a circular and cbdt said hashtag thug life you know thug life na 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 hashtag thug life any person who is becoming senior citizen on 1st april of the assessment year matlab listen this is your previous year full year you were 59 years or 79 i am explaining for both categories 59 or 79 category b category c simultaneous explanation you understanding no and your birthday is on 1st april your 60th or 80th birthday that means full year you were 59 you became 60 on the first day of the assessment year full year you were 79 you become 80 years on 1st april of the assessment year still you will be considered you will be treated as a senior citizen for the year which got over what is their logic sir sir listen they mean to say that 1st april is your birthday okay that means on 31st of march you have completed 60 and you have entered your 61st year you know we wish on 12 we we we, we wish people at 12 o'clock in the night only no irrespective of time of birth we wish people at 12 o'clock in the night do we we do the cake cutting at 12 in the night no that means they believe that 60 is completed on the 1st of april 61 has started 80 is completed 81 has started that means even if your birthday falls on 1st april and your 60 or 80 gets completed on 1st april not of the previous year full previous year you were 59 59 and 
full previous year you were 59 and 79 on the first day of the assessment year you become 60 or you become 80 you will be treated as senior citizen for the year which got over or very senior citizen of course as i told you that this explanation is applicable for both categories now it's not about challenging you it's about taking an honest honest answer from you tell me if anybody in this class was aware of this any student who was aware of this tell me now that i knew this any single student But you to already gave the wrong answer in equal to part only, no? Yes, yes, I know. I did the wrong answer. Anybody else? I take you on face value. I trust you if you say that you knew. You forgot. That's okay. Anyways, if we don't revise things, we forget. Okay? But barring this, I think all other students of class were not aware so overconfidence is already killed and if one student is saying that i was aware i just did not remember but still you gave already a wrong answer that means what i want you to be convinced about right now is there is always something that you don't know never tell yourself that i know everything never tell yourself okay because there is always scope to learn even when we are doing the easiest of topics topics like clubbing set off or house property there will always be something that you don't know always the only solution to this is be sincere in attending class so you can be 60 or 80 at any time during the previous year or even the first april of the assessment year still you will be eligible for the benefit of category b and c respectively sir what is the benefit of category b and c respectively you pay lower tax compared to category a highest tax in category a a little less in category b and the lowest in category c is that understood Chalye. we are still not done forget about we have not started the rates at all huh? We are still not done with the category. Last thing, which again, now some may say that they are aware. Even if you say, I'll take you on face value. I'll not argue. If you say that you knew this, you just forgot. I accept that you knew this. Because why will you lie? What is there in lying? There is no great achievement. Anyways, okay. So listen. The benefit of reduction in tax rate, which is available to senior citizen, 60 to 79, or very senior citizen, 80 and above, Ladies and gentlemen, only, only and only if you are a resident, only and only if you are a resident, if you are, Mitro, if you are non-resident of any age, you are 100 years age also, you will always fall in category A, you will not get the benefit of senior citizen. The benefit will be available only to the category is not senior citizen, the category is resident senior citizen. The category is resident very senior citizen. If you are a non-resident of 100 years age, you will fall in category A and you will pay tax like people of the age below 60 years. Benefit is available only to resident, not available to non-residents. Not available to non-residents. Are you telling me, are you following? very good that means if i am 85 years and resident you just have to classify tell me category a b or c 85 years resident c but if it is 85 years non resident then category a resident 65 years Non resident 65 years? A. Now listen. Provisions of non residents are going to be very, very important. 
Why, sir? The moment you see any section using the word non-resident, that means it's a part of international tax. <laughs> any section applicable to non-resident anywhere across income tax. The moment you see non-resident in any section, it means you are learning international tax. And if I remind you about the Pareto analysis that we have done, about the target that we have set, international tax, we want to score minimum 15 in the subjective part, huh? MCQs are already covered here, this 15 is out of 20, I hope you remember. In international tax, we need to have minimum 15, in that provisions of non-resident are very important, very important. At least four or five marks you have to target with provisions of non-resident. So, every time you learn a provision applicable to non-resident, learn it with more sincerity because it is a part of your target area. That way we have to study all the chapters. But when we are doing our analysis and we are playing smart to keep our target to score our marks, please make sure that you study the provisions of non-resident. How will it change your question? If the question is asking you about non-resident, then you have to put in category A and if the assessee is resident, then only the benefit of category B and C will be available. Now tell me how many people were aware of this? Only resident is eligible even if you are senior citizen, you have to be resident. Yes, sir. Okay, I, I uh, agree and I accept if you are saying this, I accept, I will not. Uh, argue or I will not say that you are lying. I accept what you are saying at face value. No problem. Now, let me be clear and tell you the categories. Finally, any individual less than 60 years will fall in this category and non-resident any age even if 100 years will fall in this category. Correct? Only if you are resident, you can touch 60 at any time during the year. Even 1st April of the assessment year, resident 60 to 79 will come here and resident 80 and above. Again, 80 also anytime during the previous year or 1st April of the assessment year. Resident 60 and resident 80 will fall in these two categories. All non-residents will fall here and all people below the age of 60 years will fall here. This is how we have divided individual assessee into three categories and tax rates are given to us category by category. Of course, we will learn the tax rates of the respective category below them. So, A under A, B under B and C under C. But the thing is, for that you need to be clear about the categories. Are you clear about the three categories of assessees here? Chaliye then, the time has come to go and learn what are the applicable tax rates for the individuals in the three respective categories. I will start with category A. So, I will write here because it is it's a tab I have to scroll but if I am writing here you understand no? I am writing here for category A, here B and here C. At least that you will understand. Chali, okay. So, category A below 60 years and non-resident of any age. Correct? An assessee who is earning up to rupees 2,50,000 in a year no need to pay any income tax. This is also popularly known as the basic exemption limit. Basic exemption limit means that amount up to which we will not take any tax for the year. This is your NTTI, your net taxable total income, means your total income for the year, including all the heads of income, salary, house property, business profession, the total income for the year. If it is up to 2,50,000, we will not take any tax from you. India follows a system of slab rates. 2,50,000 income will not be taxed. See, 2,50,000 is annual income. Means, can I conclude that your monthly income is a little over 20,000? Of course, exact 20,000 will give us 2,40. It's a little over 20,000. Do you agree with this? 20,000 rupees per month is such a low amount that this poor guy will need these funds to take care of himself and his family 
थैंक यू वेरी मच वी डोंट वॉन्ट एनी टैक्स फ्रॉम यू थैंक यू वेरी मच यू फॉलोड द होल आइडिया द होल लॉजिक ऑल थ्रू आउट अवर फोर्टी थ्री चैप्टर्स वाई लर्निंग द प्रोविजन अवर यूज रिस्पेक्ट विल ऑल्सो गो टू द लॉजिक द डिफरेंस बिटवीन माई स्टूडेंट एंड एनी अदर स्टूडेंट ऑफ द कंट्री इज दैट माई स्टूडेंट विल नॉट जस्ट लर्न द प्रोविजन my student will also know the reason behind the provision the reason and the provision both not just the law but also the reason behind enactment of the law i'll be covering that the logic part 20000 per month is too less to take tax that's the logic here i don't want you to be a ca hey wait let me complete i don't want you to be just a ca i want you to be a very good ca and there is a bloody hell lot of difference between a ca and a good ca and you are going to be at least i can be very confident about my subject you are going to be better than anybody else of course for that you have to attend class now uh, sir tomorrow i am too bored sir now i don't want to come then nothing can happen of course so up to an income of 250000 we will not be taking any tax no matter who you are we call it basic exemption limit but the moment you cross 250000 that means can i say you have crossed that benchmark of 20000 per month and you are earning up to 5 lakh total for the year huh? whatever figures we are writing here that's your total income for the year it's a good amount that you can contribute a little you are not expecting too much from you you can contribute a little towards nation building we will take from you a bare minimum rate of tax 5% very very nominal rate of tax 5% income tax we will take from you. but you all need to clearly understand what is the concept of slab rate this is your only chance to understand that please what is the concept of slab rate supposingly my total income for the year is 4 lakh rupees obviously you will have to compute income what what comes first income or tax what is calculated first income or tax income income <laughs> nice sir it depends it depends if whether you are giving ca exam or whether you are practicing as a ca if you are giving ca exam you need to calculate income on that income you calculate tax if you are a practicing ca i have a small ca firm also my wife is a chartered accountant and a company secretary both she is more qualified than me double professional degree she handles the entire ca firm and most of our marwadi relatives sir this year i want to pay 1000 rupees tax the tax is already computed now compute the income then make the balance sheet then make the pnl and last pass the journal entry we do exactly what we have been taught in accounts since 11th standard journal ledger cash book trial balance final accounts computation we do exactly that in reverse order that is a practicing ca but as a ca student you will always calculate income first and then tax no this is your total income for the year which you have already calculated so let's assume of course income calculation is our volume 3 ha huh? heads of income clubbing set of deduction let's assume that assessor has calculated income 4 lakh rupees is the total income so the question is is this slab getting attracted if my total income is 4 lakh is the slab of 5% getting attracted on the assc yes so what is going to be your tax calculation 4 lakh into 5% yes or no no because if you say yes here then you have not understood the concept of slab rate slab means whatever is your final total income it can be 4 lakh 4 crore 40 crore divide it in small parts and the first 250 will always be taxable at 0% that is basic exemption first 2 lakh 50 we will not take any tax whether you are a poor guy earning only 4 lakh first 250 no tax only the balance will come here or whether you are mukesh bhai the owner of india mukesh bhai owner of india hello 
you know which mukesh bhai i am talking about the moment i say owner of india anyways the moment we say mukesh bhai the word bhai also automatically indicates there is only one person i want to see him as the prime minister of the country one day because if he is the prime minister of the country there cannot be there will not be any corruption nobody can bribe him who who on the earth can bribe mukesh ambani forget it even if you are mukesh bhai the owner of india the first 250000 will not be taxable i am assuming that he has not become 60 years ha huh? don't get technical with me no no sir he is senior citizen he will go in category b no no assuming he is not a senior citizen first 250 even he will not pay any tax whether it makes any difference to him or no is out of question first 250 like not taxable and in the 4 lakh example the remaining 150 will be taxable at 5% that is slab rate total income will be divided into small parts i know you know all this but there are always students who don't know this who cleared ca intermediate only with support from gst so i need to clarify but now you all are clear then the moment you cross 5 lakh rupees income that means you have crossed 40000 a month and you are up to 10 lakh that is near about 80000 per month it's a good enough amount that you should contribute to nation building the applicable rate of income tax is going to be 20% for income in the slab of 5 and 10 now listen supposingly there is an assessee whose income is 8 lakh will 20% bracket get attracted on that assessee now be a little participative yes will your tax calculation be 8 into 20% No, no slab rate means we will divide the income into small parts. First two fifty, no tax. Next two fifty, two fifty to five lakh, five percent. And the balance in our example, it is only three lakh because we stopped at eight lakh. If the income was nine lakh, then we will take four. If it is nine fifty, we will take four fifty. If it is ten lakh, then we will take five lakh. Of course, it depends on how much is the income in the eight lakh example. 3 lakh into 20 percent. Tell me, are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the moment you cross 10 lakh rupees income in a year, if you have crossed 10 lakh, that means it's a good amount of income. Good amount of income. You agree with this? 80 thousand per month you have already crossed. You have more responsibility of contribution towards nation building. you will have to pay income tax at 30% but i think you all have understood now that this 30% will not be on your entire amount it will only be on your excess over 10 lakh whatever examples i took till now orally let me take with you one example in writing let us assume that there is an assessee who has already calculated ntti of 12 lakh make sure you understand that only on calculation of income you can calculate tax 12 lakh rupees answer my questions is 30% applicable on this assessee <laughs> yes will your calculation be 12 into 30 no no total income will be divided in parts first 250 no tax next 255% next 5 lakh 20% and the balance now more than 10 lakh in 12 lakh example it is only 2 lakh it can be 2 crore 20 crore anything after 10 lakh after 10 lakh anything up to infinity will be taxable at 30% accordingly what is going to be your tax liability One lakh 72500 sir how 250 into 0% zero tell me How much amount got taxed at five percent? What is that amount into five percent? Two fifty because the slab contains how much money? Two fifty to five lakh total of two fifty, twelve thousand five hundred. Tell me how much amount got taxed at twenty percent? Five lakh into twenty. That's one lakh, and of course the balance amount of two lakh was taxed at thirty percent. That total is giving you one seventy two. 500 why did i give you this break up this is not how tax calculation is done by a ca final student this stupidity is done by bcom students not even ca intermediate what i want you to understand this 
this means that till income of 10 lakh tax is fixed upper side your income can be 12 lakh 20 lakh 12 crore or 20 crore but the first 10 lakh ka tax liability is going to be fixed 1 lakh 12,500 12, you can learn this figure it will speed up your tax calculation in your exam and presentation wise also that is better what you will do is pick up the total income of the assessee on the calculator in our example what is that amount 12 lakh first remove 10 lakh from that if you remove 10 lakh what are you left with 2 lakh will be taxable at 30 percent 2 lakh will be taxable at 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 the fixed amount of tax liability till income level of 10 lakh 2 lakh into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 supposingly the income was 20 lakh then 8 lakh into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 40 lakh then 30 lakh into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 1 crore 50 lakh so 140 into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 your tax till 10 lakh is always fixed of course this is applicable if income has crossed 10 lakh you can learn this 1 lakh 12500 institute in suggested answers also presents it like this only total income minus 10 lakh into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 or if you are not comfortable it is not mandatory to learn this huh? till the time you know these rates you can do slab wise your answer will be the same i hope you are understanding it was only to reduce effort nothing else in the first lecture you may not be comfortable but slowly and gradually you will need to develop this habit these are the applicable tax rates for category a individual less than 60 years non-resident of any age 0 to 250 basic exemption 250 to 5 lakh 5 percent 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20 percent and more than 10 lakh 30 percent are the slabs understood now let's go to category b Category B means, can I say, 60 to 79 at any time during the previous year or 1st April of the assessment year. But only, 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 only if resident because non-resident of any age will go in category A. Correct or no? Chali. So, what change will take place? In my life, if I become a senior citizen, all throughout the faculty is telling me, you will pay less tax. You will pay less tax. As of what is going to be that change? The change is your basic exemption will change from 250000 to 3 lakh rupees. Basic exemption will change by 50000 So, if you are less than 60 years, you start paying tax after 250. But if you are 60 to 79 resident, then you start paying tax only after 3 lakh rupees. The rest of it ladies and gentlemen boys and girls same up to 5 lakh 5 percent 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20 percent and more than 10 lakh 30 percent this is all old regime going on huh? once old regime of all assesses will get over then only i will go to the new regime hello huh. Huh. so 5 percent 20 percent and 30 percent this part is going to remain unchanged change is only in the basic exemption so see if you understand i can directly solve this and give you the answer but i don't want to work that way i want you to understand the system here do you understand first 2 lakh 50 year also zero year also zero yeah. after 3 lakh rupees up to 5 lakh year also 5 percent year also 5 percent after 5 lakh year also 20 year also 20 after 10 lakh year also 30 year also 30 the change is only on the income of 50000 rupees the income between 250 to 3 lakh income between 250 to 3 lakh that 50000 year will come here because after 250 we go in 5 percent bracket but here it will come in 0 percent because the first 3 lakh come in 0 percent the difference between the tax over year and tax over year is only going to be 50,000 into 5 percent. Because that 50,000 between 250 to 3 lakh in this person has been taxed at 5 percent and in this person has been taxed at 0 percent. 
And if you don't understand all this, don't take so much load in your life. Don't give me that, uh, that, that bad look, that stupid expression. Let's do one thing. Let's simplify our life. Let's take the same entity. Entity I of rupees 12 lakh. Slabs are in front of you. Calculate the tax, please. Some are like, Bhak, you told no, sir, difference of 2,500, 50,000 into 5 percent. Understand how? 3 lakh into 0 percent. Last time, it was 250 into 5 percent. But this time, it will be what into 5 percent? And that is the change, ladies and gentlemen. This 12,500 has become 10,000. Because this was 2 lakh 50 into 5. This was 2 lakh into 5. Observe carefully. Rest is same. It is still 1 lakh. Because example is 12 lakh. This is still 60,000. This can anyways be a fluctuating figure. If it is 12 lakh, then 2 into 30. If it is 20 lakh, then 8 into 30. But this is the change. And this is the change actually. 12,500 has become 10,000. The difference of 2,500. Why are these figures being discussed with you? Sir, can we not just learn the slabs here? And get this answer. Yes, you can. Today is the first day. But in the coming days, you need to develop this system. Sir, how are we going to do it? Total income on the calculator minus 10 lakhs. Plus 1 lakh 10,000. For this fellow, it was 1 lakh 12,500. But for this person, it is going to be 1 lakh 10,000. That is the difference between category A and category B. Sir, what will I save in my life by becoming a senior citizen? 2,500 rupees. Hashtag thug life. What's the benefit of becoming a senior citizen? 2,500 rupees. Na, 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 na. But, but in the coming days, if you are asked to solve it like the way in which I told you, total income minus 10 lakh into 30 percent plus the fixed figure 1 lakh 12,500 and 1 lakh 10,000. Will you be comfortable if not today in the coming days try to do it that way? And this brings me to the third and the last category. At least let's have a recap of what the category is. Resident, exact 80 and above. And that 80 you can touch anytime during the previous year or 1st April of the assessment year. Can I say the age has increased a little more? Basic exemption also will increase a little up to an income of 5 lakh rupees. They will not be having any tax. No tax up to income of 5 lakh. So, basic exemption will change from 250 to 3 lakh for senior citizen and from 3 lakh to 5 lakh for very senior citizen provided both of them are resident. If they are non-resident, they will always come here and 250 is going to be their basic exemption. Please notice and remember always if the assessee is non-resident. So, will there be any basic exemption? Yes. Will there be any basic exemption? Yes. How much? 250. Always 250. Understood? Resident 80 years, 5 lakh. Please pay attention now. Please pay attention. You will go wrong if you don't pay attention. Now. Students have developed this system of singing songs, memorizing by heart. Mug up. 0, 5, 20, 30. 0, 5, 20, 30. 0, 5, 20, 30. Now, what they end up doing here is they end up writing 5% here. How will you write 5% here? Don't be so stupid. This entire slab up to 5 lakh is already gone. This is not applicable only. Are you following? You start paying tax only after 5 lakh. Same rate. 20% and after 10 lakh at 30%. No change. No change. For very senior citizen, it is only 0, 20 and 30. Sir, is it not unfair to them, sir? Other people are getting 5% bracket. They are not getting 5% bracket. Arif, gadeda. 
when other people are paying 5%, they are not paying tax at all. You have brains to understand. If you don't have brains, use calculator. That is more trustworthy. Do one thing. Take the same entity I of 12 lakh. See what do you get as tax liability. Just tell me one thing. What was the tax that the first category was paying in 5% bracket? That amount? First bracket, 5%. No, 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 no. 5% bracket, I am asking. 5% bracket. The tax liability in that bracket? 12,500. What was the tax that they were paying in the bracket? In fact, that was the only 2,500 difference. Because the remaining part was same only. And that only is being reflected here. That 12,500 or that 10,000 they will not pay because their 5 lakh has gone away in basic exemption limit and ladies and gentlemen that is only going to be the difference between the first two categories and the third category just remove this tax and the rest of it is same so from here you will get a difference of 12,500 because that was the bracket and from here you will get a difference of 10,000 because that was the bracket and of course in these two we already have seen the difference of 2,000 500 this is going to be 1 lakh 60 thousand sir how is this going to be 1 lakh 60 thousand no tax this slab is only not applicable this 1 lakh is fixed and this 30 percent will depend here in 12 lakh we will take on 2 lakh in other words in other words after today whenever you are asked calculation of tax liability pick up the total income of the SSC please pay attention Subtract 10 lakh rupees. After you subtract 10 lakh, you get the excess over 10 lakh. Whether it is 12 lakh ka 2 or 20 lakh ka 8 or 40 lakh me 30 or 50 lakh me 40. Whatever is the excess over 10 lakh you will get on your calculator. Apply 30% tax on that. Plus the fixed tax till 10 lakhs. 1 lakh 12,500. Tell me here. Fixed tax till 10 lakh. Here, your first category was 1 lakh 12,500. I am asking the second category now. 1 lakh 10,000. And the third category fixed tax is 1 lakh rupees. This is going to reduce your effort as well as time consumed in calculation of tax. Have we understood this? This is, by the way, short term memory loss people, let me remind you, I am teaching you tax rates applicable for previous year 21-22, assessment year 22-23, which is applicable for May as well as November 22. That tax rate is in old regime and new regime. Right now, we are in old regime. We will finish old regime of all assesses, then we go to new regime. In the old regime also, we are still in the first assessee. Who is the first assessee in income tax? Individual natural person divided in three categories. We did category A, category B and category C. Only difference was their basic exemption limit. And whatever is the difference in numbers, that also we have already identified. But I have got some bad news for you. Whatever tax you have calculated by putting all the effort, whether these slabs or these slabs or these slabs, whatever tax you have calculated, ladies and gentlemen, the bad news is that this is only your basic tax. This is only, only what? Basic tax. This is not final. The tax that you have calculated is going to undergo some changes. And unless and until you are having knowledge of those changes, I have to tell you in the names of those changes, there is a concept called rebate. There is a concept called surcharge. And there is a concept called cess. Unless and until you are aware of how to make those changes, you can never calculate the final tax liability. Imagine a chartered accountant going and telling his client, I have calculated your tax 170 to 500. But this is not final. It will change. Client will say, Gajeda, then change and tell me the final answer. No. You have to change and tell your client the final answer. No. And bring about the change. Are you following what I am saying? You need to learn those concepts. Without learning the concepts of rebate, surcharge and cess, 
your tax calculation can never get completed of course we don't have that much time that we will be able to complete those three concepts so before winding up i would just like to tell you one last thing have we understood the slabs and accordingly calculated at least the basic tax calculation though we are yet to learn the concept of rebate surcharge says just one thing i would like to tell you that in income tax there is a chapter 12 i am not teaching you i am only telling you not teaching you i'll teach you somewhere else chapter 12 income tax is divided in chapters hello like you know about chapter 6a that's the only chapter you know only chapter chapter 1 is basic concept chapter 2 is residential status chapter 3 is exempt income income tax is divided in chapters chapter 12 is special rates of tax starting from section 110 and going on to section 115 bbg bubg not pubg bubg 110 to 115 bbg certain incomes will not be taxable at these rates these rates are not applicable i'll give you examples example long term capital gains are taxable in two sections 112 112a if it is stock market then 112a is applicable and if it is other than stock market like sale of land or jewelry then 112 is applicable for short term capital gain if sold on stock market there is a section 111a for an income called casual winnings there is a section called 115 bb i am not teaching anything right now please pay attention just tell me one thing are these section numbers falling in the range tell me that just tell me that yes there are certain incomes which are taxable at special rate long term capital gain will be taxable at 20 percent or stock market cases 10 percent slabs are not applicable short term capital gain stock market will be taxable at 15 percent slabs are not applicable casual winnings are taxable at 30 percent slabs are not applicable so what you will have to do is pay attention if your NTTI contains any income which is taxable at special rate you have to remove those incomes and those incomes will be subject to their respective rates whether ltcg or stcg or casual winnings and only your other income like your salary pgbp house property will be taxable at the normal slab rates you have to always segregate your income and apply the rates you cannot apply slabs on your total income this chapter 12 will be covered with you in your portion if you check the index we have a chapter called special rates of tax so don't worry i just wanted to make you aware you can always have a doubt sir 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 you are teaching us these slabs sir but what about long term capital gains sir what about casual winnings if i ask you some conditions you will never be able to answer you just want to show your smartness i am informing you in advance that there are certain incomes which don't get taxed at slabs they will be taxed at special rates so we will segregate our incomes into normal special normal special normal special normal income normal rate and special income special rate that will give us our basic tax and then we will apply the concept of rebate surcharge says. okay so this was just for knowledge purposes i am not teaching this chapter right now it is going to be separately taught to you i think we are clear on this and then of course individual tax rate is still not complete because we have to still learn rebate surcharge says with that we will complete individual in old regime then we will learn other assesses in old regime and then we will go to new regime chronology you know what about home minister understand the chronology please understood all right ladies and gentlemen boys and girls